your wrist a plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we got some syrup to get into, okay? We got some things to discuss that may not be as fiery, as spicy, as controversial, as the last video, I had time to take a little breather, okay? Walk around in a circle, pace a little bit. Come on in, everybody. Hit thumbs up. We got a great show lined up for y'all this evening, okay? We made it to another Friday, Stickies. How, how goes it, okay? How goes it? This week went by pretty, pretty quick. I think that there are a, a lot of weeks have been going by pretty quick. But look, let me start off by saying this. Thank you so much for 11,000 subscribers like it was literally just two weeks ago i was thanking y'all for 10k and here we are at 11k and honestly me and my co-host leo we couldn't be more grateful he oh <gasps> leo move oh my god you knocking stuff over bro jesus what gives Damn. Leo. Dang, I like having you part of the show, but this is a bit much. This is this this is excessive. Lord have mercy. Get the the the, the intro ain't supposed to be like this. We got the screen, got cloudy, the picture went out. Damn. You got to stop biting at the at the treats like that and you have to chew them up all the way. You're going to get indigestion. Leo, come on, get down. I'm going to give you one more, but you need to get down. Over here. Over. Get all the way. Okay, give it a second. Give it, give it a second. Oh, my God. I can't believe you be having my shows like this. They be, they be so intact and in order, and then here you come. Oh my God. We back. We're back with the second stream, back to back. Two streams this evening. We had some Beyonce bingo in the last one. Okay. I mixed in with that very serious, very heavy, very necessary topic and conversation. So come on in, get comfortable on the bus. Leo, the, treat, the, the treats are gone. So you can stop coming after my hand. Y'all, the cat on the bus, he ain't got his seatbelt on or nothing. He's he, very rowdy. Very Friday night turn up behavior. Come on now. In, in a second, I'm going to have to embarrass you in front of your friends. So we got some stuff that we need to get into, okay? What did y'all have for dinner? I ain't had nothing for dinner. I'm hangry. I'm going to let you know now. I'm hangry, okay? I don't eat dinner when I got to do these shows like this, especially back to back, because I'm going to get tired and I'm going to get the itis and y'all ain't going to get no show, okay? I'm hangry. I'm not going to eat till this live ends, so don't play with me today, all right? Don't play with me. I'm that substitute teacher that walk in the room like I worked in the inner city, so don't play with me. <laughs> Seriously, don't do it, because I, I, yeah, tonight's the night. You can get it. So tonight, we got some stuff to get into. Shout out to all 120 of y'all in here. Thank you for supporting, hitting thumbs up, and, you know, for subscribing. You know what I'm saying? So today, we're getting into some info on Chadwick Boseman, okay? The documentary, another documentary, because there's already been some, like, documentaries and tributes. There's another one coming out, okay? Obviously, we're talking about Derek Chauvin Chauvin. I really don't care to pronounce his name correctly. This is the man who deleted, who took out. George Floyd, okay? We got updates on Brittany Griner, Christian Toby Obamselli. Yeah, another one. I know we just got into one about how uh, she was charged with murder, but there's another update. We've got updates on the R. Kelly situation. Obviously, you read the title. Another Sesame Street update. Again, I know we just got into a Sesame Street update, but we've got another one. Of course, we got some Beyonce bingo popping off somewhere sprinkled and hidden in this video. And so much more that we're getting into this evening. So do me a favor. Come on and get comfortable. Have your seat. I know one of my moderators and channel members, Tay Tay, said she was going to the bathroom scene. She ain't want nobody to steal her seat on the bus. Okay? 
Somebody said they put their purse in the way. Listen, the bus is speeding this evening. I don't got time for no nonsense. I've already covered the most heavy and serious topic for the evening. So I'm really ready to have some fun while I inform y'all at the same time. So hit thumbs up. Have a seat on the bus. Oh, somebody has spaghetti. Spaghetti and fish. Mm, that sounds good. Okay. Um, hit thumbs up. Have a seat on the bus. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Special shout out to my moderators. Y'all definitely do an amazing job. And I appreciate y'all. Let's get ready for takeoff. Shall we? The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? Y'all are having chicken. Okay, this person said chicken and waffles. Genty Fit to Quit says chicken and french fries, jalapenos and biscuits. Girl, not trying to make me hungry knowing I got this old show and I ain't ate yet. How rude of y'all to comment. Oh, hold on. Sirloin steak, butter pea, butter beans, red tip potatoes and rolls. Y'all are, <laughs> are doing it up, okay? <laughs> y'all are doing it uh okay shout out to light vision saying you know i rolls with you jane thank you so much you know i appreciate you girl you know we be talking and we haven't talked on the phone in a while i'm, I'm gonna have to contact you this weekend so we can catch up nonetheless y'all are aboard the black news bus whether you know it or not and for those of you all who are not familiar with what the black news bus is the black news bus is basically a social media stroll where we take a look and we dive into what's going on in the celebrity world we talk about that but we also talk about what's going on on the real everyday citizen part of the world, everyday people like you and me, what's affecting people like us in our tax bracket, you know, the people who don't make as much money as Missy Misdemeanor Elliott and things like that. So it's a very diverse uh, list of information that we go through and entertainment that we go through. But also we talk about what's going on as far as black history. And I'm always dropping some black excellence in the video as well. So real quick, I hope y'all are feeling all right. You know, I always mention mental health in the beginning of all my videos. If your mental health ain't intact, if there's something in the title that makes you feel like, I don't like this video or I don't like this series, don't watch it then. Don't watch it, right? Mind your mental health. But also, if you haven't tended to whatever's going on in your real life, in your real world, your spiritual warfare, click away from this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Or I'll catch you in this video at another time when you're able to handle it. So, Shout out to my new subscribers again. Thank you for not only 11K, for 11.6K, which means that we're less than 400 subscribers away from 12K. Crazy, 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 crazy. But of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. It's about time we got into it. There was a lot of stuff that transpired today. <laughs> okay. D Sanders, thank you so much for the 999 super chat. I appreciate that so, so, so very much. Okay. Speaking of super chats, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, before we get started, let's get into a good word from our sis, Kiki Palmer. Okay. I do think that this is going to be one of them streams that YouTube ain't going to be messing with like that. Because we all going to be talking about the, the, the deletion of George Floyd and how he was taken out and some other stuff. So please feel free. It's not a requirement, right? It's not required, but it is appreciated. You can send a cash app. You can send a super chat. But if you ain't, if this ain't your pay week, if this ain't your payday, because it is Friday, you can donate for free by hitting the thumbs up button. And I appreciate all support the same way, whether it's monetary or not. So do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you got a couple dollars, send a cash app. If not, that's fine as well, right? Um, Kiki Palmer is a vibe, okay? Kiki Palmer is just that girl. Like, I would love to meet Kiki Palmer and have some drinks with her or just have like an hour-long conversation because her personality is just so, it's everything. It's everything, it's everything. Do y'all notice I, I, I took off my button up from the last video? I said, let me give y'all two different vibes, similar vibes, but different vibes, right? It's Friday night, we letting loose, we letting our hair down. It's a lot going on. It's the end of the week roundup, okay? 
nonetheless, Kiki Palmer has something to say about what she wishes existed in the industry as far as medical expertise, what she wishes there was more of, or, or, or what she wishes even really existed. And I think it's important to talk about that. So I want to get into that because Kiki always deserves attention, flowers, and she's, she is typically saying something that is of value. Okay, let's take a listen. Good morning, y'all. I was just thinking about the fact that plastic surgeons are amazing, okay? They can give you a boob job above the muscle, under the muscle, liposuction, tummy tuck, BBL. They can even implant muscles. I mean, the list goes on, but they cannot figure out how to clear up somebody's skin. Are you kidding me? All of these years and all of these adventures, you can't figure out how to take the beautiful skin from my ass and put it on my face? I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. People went <laughs> out here with adult acne are struggling and you ain't figured out that cure? I'm done. Good morning, y'all. I was just... She's got a point. She's got a point, right? Um, Kiki has been pretty open about her issues or her, you know, her struggles with her skin, but she's still beautiful nonetheless. Don't get it messed up. Regardless of what skin situation she's dealing with on her face, the fact that she's so beautiful and wholesome on the inside, it It shines. It shines from on the outside. So she's always looked stunning and amazing to me. However, uh, you know, dealing with a, a situation of acne, she's still, you know, she wants to cure. And you got to wonder, like, why is there a plethora of people who are willing to do all of these artificial things to your body, all of these cosmetic things to your body as it pertains to making you look unnatural as hell. But when it comes to something as serious as remedying, and, and honestly, I'm not trying to downplay anything. Kiki has, has been, she's beautiful, right? But there's some people who suffer with acne a bit worse. I'm not trying to trivialize her situation. And people with acne, regardless of what level it's on, they do deserve a great amount of help. It just seems like there's a, a, an, an overage of people who are studying all of the superficial craziness and, and to be honest, unnecessary and unrealistic expectations and standards of beauty rather than the things that are really normal why haven't y'all figured this out y'all figured out how to make um you know booties as as big as three basketballs you y'all remember that that woman and uh, she was one of those reality shows i didn't watch it like that but she them them things was so big that it was like whoever put those implants on Ange, angie and Ange, or whatever her name was they need to have a license taken away because they were literally the size of three basketballs each breast you know what i'm saying so uh th this is definitely something that does need to be addressed why is there such an overage with the unnecessary superficial stuff and when you have skincare issues you can't even get help kiki palmer has all the money in the world right she might not be as rich as michael jackson was but she's a lot richer than all of us combined i could imagine in a chat i ain't trying to downplay y'all I'm, I'm just trying to give kiki her credit you know she's got all the money in the world and she still doesn't have a solution for her skin situation. Meanwhile, any woman with twenty or thirty thousand dollars can go make her butt look crazy. It doesn't make sense, and I'm with Kiki on that. However, because Kiki is our girl, I want to point out the part of the video that is probably that 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 might become a meme. Hold on, let, let let's let's just listen to it again thinking about the fact that plastic surgeons are amazing, okay? They can give you a boob job above the muscle, under the muscle, liposuction, tummy tuck, BBL. They can even implant muscles. I mean, the list goes on, but they cannot figure out how to clear up somebody's skin. Are you kidding me? All of these years and all of these adventures, you can't figure out how to take the beautiful skin from my ass and put it on my face? I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. People went out here with adult acne and sh I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. That's a meme within itself. I'm done with it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm done with it. People went out here with adult <laughs> That's it. That is it. Okay. Somebody in the audience said there's so many issues that Kiki could have brought awareness about, but she chose skin. Um, this same person also said Kiki sucks. Let's be real. If you think Kiki sucks, honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, you suck. 
Kiki don't bother nobody. She's a successful black woman in her own right in the entertainment industry. And it's really difficult to survive in that industry and to not be sucked in into all of the dark and demonic entities uh, that are there. So if you think she sucks and you think her talking about skin is an issue, and to be quite honest, she brought awareness to the overage of the unrealistic and unhealthy plastic surgeon obsession, which also touches on body dysmorphia. So she touched on quite a few issues, but if you didn't catch it, you might be a little bit too slow to catch it. So she talked about quite a few issues and she's talking about something that's relevant to her. I'm sorry if you want her to pander to some movement or some organization that she doesn't necessarily resonate with, but Kiki Palmer uses her voice and she speaks up about a lot. I just decided to pick up on this joking, but very relevant opinion that she has about all of the surgeons who are readily available to make women look unnatural as opposed to the people who are the surgeons and the doctors and medical professionals who are willing to assist women in uh, their skin situations. And skin is a big deal. It is your face. Your face is your representative. And people with heavy skin issues, especially acne, acne is not just a teenager issue. It's an issue for everyone. So if you don't want Kiki to speak up about her own issues, if you would rather her look in the encyclopedia of issues in the world and to speak on one of those because you feel like that would be more PR friendly or whatever for people, um, you know, I kind of recommend you seek help. I do. Kiki don't bother nobody. And this is her plight and her situation. And I agree with her, although I've never dealt with acne but I have dealt with one or two pimples at a time. And even me, never having had had an acne problem, but feeling small and ugly as hell, when I had one crazy pimple, I understand how she feels in a slightest extent. And she's very welcome and warranted to speak about her own issue. So, yeah. Um, so that's that. So I love Kiki. We love Kiki over here. There's going to be no Kiki hate or Kiki slander. And if there is, we're going to tell you about yourself. Me and the chat. I see the chat is already digging in your ass of what you deserved. Let's move on to the next situation. Let me talk about Black women. And shout out to everybody in here already. It's 200 of us at 1237 in the morning. Shout out to all of you all this Friday night. Okay. Let's move on. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. So the next situation that we are going to discuss is about Lizzo. I'm sure so many of us have heard about the Lizzo situation. And I want to know how y'all feel about it. Look, I, I, I feel cut and dry. I've heard people um, creating leeway, creating leeway. Um, but for me, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm just kind of going to say no, I'm just kind of going to say no, but I, I'm, I'm going to play the clip and then we're going to get into why Lizzo and the movie Precious or Gabby Sindabe, um, why they were trending together. Okay. Let's get into this clip. Lady. Yes. I feel so like I do. Precious. No. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Uh, that is Lizzo. She is precious, though. Lizzo's precious. That's like what I call her. Lizzo uh, is her precious. Is precious to me. Yes. <laughs> no, Lizzo is precious. Uh, okay. Will Kathy know this man, lady? Yes. I know you did not call Lizzo precious. I feel like I do. Precious? No. That's not <laughs> Girl! I don't know. Who was them black people back there laughing? Let me zoom in. Hold up. Hold on. Let's see. Who's it? Who's this? Who's that? Mm-hmm. Give me your black card. Hand it over. Hand it over right now. You don't need it. You don't need it. What's going on? What's going on? That you thought that this was funny. So how long are we dragging Kathy? I, I I don't know. You know she should have never been on a show like this if she does or 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 or, or been asked questions like this if she doesn't understand who different black people in the industry are. Lizzo and 
um, you know, the star of Precious or Gabby Cinder Bay. Um, they're two totally different people. Okay. One thing about us as black people, y'all know I talk about black news all the time. We do not, <laughs> we do not be given printer color paper people, right? Printer paper color people. We do not give them a pass for getting us mixed up. Like we just don't. We, oh, all of us look the same. I think somebody had called Samuel L. Jackson, Morgan Freeman one time in a live interview. And he was like, oh, so you think we all look the same? Like, no, we're not giving y'all no passes. You should have never been on the show like that. You should have had better stipulations and what they could and couldn't ask you, what they could and couldn't show you. And from my understanding, right, I was watching Fox Soul. I saw Al Reynolds. Shout out to Fox Soul. Shout out to Al Reynolds, right? And he was like, oh, I've hung out with her several times, her and her husband. She's not really in the loop. She says a, a, a lot of just uh, aloof things. Well, you know, if she's not in the loop and she doesn't understand, you know, the culture, what's going on in modern society, she shouldn't be playing a game like this. And if she is playing a game like this, she need to have people that look like her who are part of the game, you know? I mean, hell, I, it, it, yeah, it would have been hella funny if they would have pulled up a picture of Jack Harlow and they said, who is this? And she said, Eminem, I would have laughed my ass off. But it was us. So that shit ain't funny. Um, mess up your own people in comparisons and shit. We don't got time for that. And we don't have no grace because y'all be saying, y'all be acting like we all look alike. And we don't. <laughs> okay? When you get in Morgan Freeman and Samuel O. Jackson confused as the same person, you got a problem. You need to shut the hell up and stop guessing at who people are and what they look like. That's that's just that's just period point blank. You could have easily took the Kiki Palmer route, shout out to Kiki, and said, I don't know this man. <laughs> I don't know this woman. And I don't know who that is. But one thing we don't do is we do not give passes like that. If you if you name us wrong and you say we all look alike, god damn it, it's over. Okay. It's over. <laughs> it's over. So how long is we dragging, child? Because I you know, what what's her name? Kathy, you know, because honestly, it's it's it, it's giving Madonna. It's 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 giving a lot of stuff. Like I just can't, I can't. But let's move on to the next subject, okay? We're we're we're, we're getting into a lot of different subjects this evening, all right? And I don't want this to be a three-hour show. It'd be nice if this could be a two-hour show. I'll be tired sometimes. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. I can't wait to clip up that damn uh, Kiki video. <laughs> Nonetheless, what I do want to do is I want to talk about this Chadwick Boseman documentary. Okay? I want to talk about that. And shout out to all 219 people who are here at 1245 in the morning. Thank you for hitting thumbs up. Let's get into the next subject. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right. So this Chadwick Boseman documentary that is coming up. Okay. It's going to be titled Autopsy, The Last Hours of Chadwick Boseman. You can see the headline here. The article on the screen, it says the shocking death of Black Panther actor Chadwick Boseman explored. Now, we all know that Chadwick Boseman passed away at the very young age of 43 years old. It was uh, actually in 2020, August 28, 2020. And apparently this documentary, and there's, there's, there's been a couple of tributes slash documentaries, however you want to kind of categorize them. But this is a new one that's supposed to be coming out on on a on a platform at I don't know situation called Reels, and it's supposed to be focusing on. And I really want to know how y'all feel about this. It's supposed to be focusing on his colon cancer and how it may have developed. So no one knew that Chadwick actually had colon cancer until days before his death. This documentary is supposed to explore the different aspects of his death, including a hernia that he endured as a little boy. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I'm, 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 I'm going to keep it honest. I didn't really care for the write-up that 
I saw online, which is where I discovered this new documentary that's supposed to be coming out about Chadwick Boseman, which was Radar Online, because it made no mention of his family. It made no mention of his family. And the forensic pathologist and series expert who's supposed to be involved, right, given, given all of the information in this documentary, um, this forensic pathologist um, seems to be focused on exploring hypothetical health situations and using Chadwick's name in order to do so. It also seems like they're using the, 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 the Black Panther franchise, like, you know, the name of that, in order to do so as well. One of the quotes from the article that I noticed was hernia's kin because they found out that he had a, a hernia as a child. Hernia's kin lead to intestine issues and and uh, intestinal issues and can lead to colon cancer, right? And I, I want to show you proof of that. I'm not making that up. And, and something about it seems exploitive. If I'm wrong, cool. But I saw no mention of the family here. And it's something just, it, it, it seems weird. It seems weird. And I want to show you something else, right? Um, you know, it, it was hypothetical. They didn't say his hernia led to his colon cancer. They were like, oh, well, he had a hernia as a child. And, you know, hypothetically speaking, a hernia can lead to intestine issues, which can lead to colon cancer. Like, that's not fact. You can have basic conversations about health and what could potentially lead to something else without having to talk about Chadwick. And when I saw this part of the article as well, it said, so... Did Chadwick ignore the warning signs? That does not sit well with me. It, it's just me. I, I, I could be, I, I could be hypersensitive to it, right? I could be overreacting. But there, at no point that I see, well, his wife said this, or his family member said this, or this. It just seemed like, let's dig into this medical stuff and talk about hypothetical situations on the back of Chadwick. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Do y'all see this quote right here that says, so did Chadwick ignore the warning signs? Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I can't wait till the family speaks about this, whether they approve of it or they don't. Because, you know, people, they be running with uh, talking about people's lives without even getting permission. Mike Tyson got a whole... Uh, you know, movie coming out about him where this actor is reenacting his life situations, his achievements, his, his downfalls and everything else. And Mike is like, I didn't approve this. I don't like this. This is not what, you know, hell, if we think back to the Notorious movie, which depicted Biggie and the elements surrounding that, you know, you had Tupac portrayed in it and Lil' Kim portrayed in it. Lil' Kim was against, her, you know, her portrayal in the Notorious movie. Just because a film is made about a celebrity, it doesn't mean that the person was okay with it or that the family is okay with it, whether they're here or they're not. And something about this is a little, is a little off, uh, off putting for me. So I would love to hear what the family has to say. Are, are, are they with it? Did they approve this or did they not? Or are they just looking through public records and trying to make hypothetical conclusions? Yeah, hernias can lead to colon cancer, but do you need to talk about Chadwick in order to have that conversation about hypothetical health? Mm, not sure. Something doesn't seem right about this. Something doesn't seem right. And, and when I came across this headline today, it it, it, just, it just didn't seem well to me. It just didn't sit well. Okay. Um, isn't Reels known for low budget, salacious documentaries? Honestly, I've never seen anything on Reels. I, I, so... I don't even know. I don't know what they're about. Are they worse than Zeus? I don't know. I don't know. But um, something's going on. Something's going on. And I just don't like it. Um, Alan, thank you so much for the four ninety nine dollars Super Chat. Says, Reels Channel always does autopsy series on celebrities who passes away. Who passed away. It explores their health while they were alive. Mm-hmm. Okay, I I would love to look I, I I would love to look more into it, and it would be nice to know just because they do 
um, a lot of autopsy series, does it mean that the families are okay with it and the estates? Um, does it mean that? Does it mean that? Is it okay? Um, so Rashida says, I thought you were going to be talking about pedophiles. I'm late. Who knows? Rashida, the video about pedophiles, about issues under the flag, that was the last stream. It was about 30, 25, 30 minutes. No. Yeah, it was about 35 minutes ago I ended that stream. So if you want to check out that episode of Issues Under the Flag, it's there. But we ended that stream and we've started the next one. So, um, you know, if you're not up to speed, you can catch up. But we ended that stream. You know how sometimes I do two lives in a row? I'll do one live and then I'll go live and do another one. Like the other night, the the, the day before yesterday, I went live and I talked about Marad Morali. I did that feet video and then I ended that. I connected the bus rides, right? I dumped everybody into the next live chat. And then I did the black news about the T.I.'s daughter and all that. This is the same thing. So, I mean, you know, I, I just, um, I hope you, you you start to understand how things work around here. Because I know you were in the chat of the last video. And you were a little confused about the point of that video where I was calling out and talking about pedophiles. But hopefully you kind of start to understand it a little bit better now. This is a totally different stream about totally different things. So maybe you missed the stream about the pedophiles. So I, um, I, I hope you reach an understanding soon about um, how things work. And if you know, if you if you if you look at the titles of the videos that you're watching, you will better understand the subject matter and what's going on in the current uh, in the current video. So, yeah. Um, that's how that goes. Yeah. Um. So. Back to the subject here. I hope that um, I hope that Chadwick's family agrees with what is going on with this documentary because it just you know it, it seems it seems a, a little insensitive to say something like, "Did Chadwick ignore the warning signs?" Like, let me tell you something. I've got somebody in my life. That's really, 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 really close to me who dealt with colon cancer and just survived. Um, we found out about a, a month and a half ago that they were colon cancer free. Okay. So colon cancer, like, look, it's a, it's a, it's a serious thing. It's not, whether it's Chadwick Boseman or my next door neighbor, I don't care. Like it just shouldn't be exploited in that way. And so did Chadwick ignore the warning signs? Like, I don't know. Like that, that just seems insensitive to me. It really does. It really does. Okay. Um, so moving on, I hope Chadwick's family is okay with it. And if they ain't, I hope they speak out and God damn it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help them ring the alarm about it. If they aren't okay with it. It's, it's really odd that you would even make a documentary about somebody and that you wouldn't even include mention of the family. That's odd to me. But th that's just me. That's just me. I could be taking it personal because I know somebody, you know what I'm saying? We, ju we just got over that situation. They cancer free now. But perfectly unordinary. Sends a 999 super chat. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Says the pathologist is very professional and tactful. In his commentary, fortunately, it's nothing like Zeus Network. Give it a chance. Okay. You know the pet. Okay, well, we on the camera. Okay, and what do you want? Okay, anything else? Okay. Do you want another treat? Okay. All right. That's it. That is it. All right. Because you still got one more to get when we end. Right. So that's it. So leave me alone about it. <laughs> leave me alone about it. <sighs> <laughs> the 
They said, not, y'all don't think he really talks? Leo talks a lot. He's a very responsive kid. <laughs> yeah. Leo, get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. Okay. He's a very talkative brother. <laughs> he is. Okay. <laughs> they said not that Leo demanded more funds midstream. Yes, he's demanding more funds midstream. All right. Let's move on to the next subject. Okay. Cats be saying a lot of words. <laughs> okay. Middle of the damn stream. All right. So let's get into the next topic, right? Stand on the subject of black news and all that other stuff, right? Yeah, he always get the last word. Um, Johnson & Johnson. A lot of us have been... We've been using this brand for a long time, right? Now, mind you, I haven't used it in a while, but I use it a lot coming up, to be completely honest with you. They're back in the news again. Back in the news again. And... Look, we got to pay attention to what these products are doing to our health. I know a lot of us use this product growing up and maybe even now. I know some of my aunts, you know, you know, people with big titties. And look, I developed my big titties late. OK, um, they get on my nerves. I wish these things would go down at least two sizes because it's just too much. It's too much. I can't do a jumping jack. I can't do nothing. OK, <laughs> but if you got family, members, I got a lot of family members with big titties. Right. And they use it. And they use it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not just for babies. Like black folk, we didn't use this, this for a long time. Okay. And when I go visit my aunts and stuff like that, because sometimes you can tell, like if they're if they don't put a lot down in their cleavage or whatever, and you know, you you give them a hug or whatever, sometimes you'll like just see a powder pool, or at least I I will. You know what I'm saying? Like in my aunts, I'll be like, damn, like you, or sometimes your aunts will come downstairs. You know what I mean? If you have a, spent the summer at your grandmother, aunt house, whoever the hell, and they come downstairs after a shower, you know, they took a shower because you heard the shower or whatever. And then they come downstairs with their shirt on and you see all this, all this powder, all, you know, you go in a room and all you see is the, the damn Johnson and Johnson's baby powder. Look, I know for me growing up, my people, my family, the cookouts, whatever, it's a heavy thing. And even still, they be using it. And it be hard to get your family out of using product. Because what other brand of baby powder do you know about? You would just have to go pick like another random one. But, but, but people be like a name brand. People like a certain brand or whatever. Yes, the neck, the this. It is, and especially in the summer. You don't really see it too much in the winter. But in the summer, oh, yeah, you'll see your great aunt, see your grandmother come downstairs, and you'll see all this powder build up around there or whatever. <laughs> You know, but like I said, we have to pay attention to what's going on. Johnson & Johnson is pulling baby powder containing talc, right? Baby powder containing, containing talc worldwide. They're pulling it next year after it did the same in the United States and Canada amid thousands of lawsuits claiming that it caused cancer. So, you know, they're saying that the talc is going to, Johnson & Johnson is saying that the talc is going to be replaced by cornstarch. Now, Johnson & Johnson also faced litigation alleging that the talcum powder in the baby powder caused people who used the product over, to develop ovarian cancer um, through use for feminine hygiene or meso, mesothelioma and a cancer that strikes the lungs and other organs. So people have been trying to make this connection or have been making this connection to cancer, meso, what is it? Mesothelioma. Ooh, I only hear that word in, in some of those warning. Come on, you know how you be up late at night and they be like, have you used a product that led to mesothelioma? Like, oh, if, if you're just naming off all these sites, if so, call this number. You're in for big bucks. So, yeah, you know, th there's a lot of stuff going on and, and, and a lot of different illnesses that they are saying are caused by Johnson & Johnson. And it's hard to really believe uh, because it's a baby product, right? Like, why would they make something like that that you would put on babies, but then adults be hijacking the baby products and using it for themselves? 
But, you know, it's a real thing and it's been happening for years. When I was strolling through the newspapers today and I saw this, I'm like, damn, this Johnson & Johnson thing's still going on because it was literally years ago that this stuff happened that they should have changed the formula or pulled it off the shelves. Why is talc still in the product when people are claiming that it's leading to this many different illnesses? It doesn't make sense. However, Johnson & Johnson insists and that the overwhelming majority of medical research on talc um, indicates that the talc baby powder is safe and doesn't cause cancer. However, we're going to refute that in a second. But um, the brand of baby powder, it, it fell off, right? And it wasn't until the demand decreased that Johnson & Johnson decided to remove the product in most of North America in 2020. They didn't recall it. They didn't pull it off all the shelves. They didn't make a nation, a, a global, you know, change or whatever it's sold. It's just, you know, they removed it in most of North America in 2020. It's 2022. Uh, what is it? This is the eighth month of the year. In four months, in five months, it's going to be 2023. So why do you still have this, this chemical in your product it doesn't make sense they only pulled it off the shelf after they saw that the in, in those places after they saw that the demand dropped due to misleading talc litigation advertising that caused global global confusion and unfounded concern end quote okay and the fact that they provided misleading talc litigation and advertising right and, and all of this led to global confusion and concern it's basically the fact that they said that it was safe and it doesn't cause cancer but you got all these cases of cancer popping up and popping up popping up from consumers of said baby powder so they announced on thursday that they're going to simplify the product selection and meet the global trends but they didn't want to make these products they didn't want to pull it from the shelves until the money hit. They were going to let people complain about cancer and whatever other illness un uh, until the wheels fell. They didn't care. They only cared when the sales declined. They said, okay, well, now we need to change it because I guess it's affecting people's health. But they didn't care about the health until it affected their sales. So my opinion is they care more about money than the safety of their own consumers. And that's that's how I feel personally, because again, this Johnson & Johnson, they should have been changed the formula. Like we're literally two and a half years in and they still have arguably deadly stuff in their product that they cared not to change until their pocket was affected. That's trash. That's trash, but you know what? It's trash, and that's my opinion. I'm curious to your thoughts in the chat, whether you're on the bus right now or whether you're catching a replay, which means, right, you're chasing the bus. So let me know how you feel about it down below in the comments. Now, let's move on to the next thing. Shout out to Perfectly Unordinary for joining the channel. Thank you so much. If you're a part of the channel, you are able to participate in the Beyonce bingo, which is where I have three Beyonce boxes that I'm giving away. So check the members only community tab so you can check out the rules. Let's move on to something else that we need to give an update on. Y'all remember Christian Toby Obam Sully, right? Christian Toby Obam Sully. And shout out to all of y'all in the chat. Okay. If you ain't hit thumbs up already, we can fight. Okay. It's 273 of us right here at one o'clock in the morning. Right. So make sure y'all hit thumbs up if you are here on my bus. We got 170 thumbs up and 270 people here. We need 100 more thumbs up. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me before we fight. Because I'll kick you off the bus. Stop playing. I need to make a kick you off the bus slide. That's what I need to do. But let's get into another update about Christian Toby Obam Sully, shall we? Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right. So this next piece of information that we're going to get in on, a lot of you all are already familiar. I gave a really nice recap the day before yesterday, right? In the video. So I don't want to waste time giving another recap. If you know, you know. If you don't, you need to catch up. I've done several videos on this, right? And so Christian Toby Obamselli, black man, 
deleted, control alt deleted, shut down by his white girlfriend. A lot of black women decided to sit this one out. The next update that we have in reference to this situation, you know, I told you the day before yesterday that the, and, and this happened April 3rd. April 3rd is when he passed away. And just the day before yesterday, two days ago, the girlfriend was charged with I mean, second degree murder. She was charged with second degree murder. There was something else that came out based off of them being in court. Let's get into some elevator footage. Now, listen, he was murdered in cold blood on August 3rd. This footage right here is from February of this year, okay? So February, March, April, this was just two months before. Not even, because it was February 22nd and he was killed on April 3rd. So that's more kind of like a month and a half, a month or two weeks. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into this update. This is some elevator footage from February 22nd of this year. Hitting the screen, okay? Push, push, push. It's terrible. She's out of control. He's really trying to restrain her. This is giving Ray Rice vibes. Y'all remember? Well, Ray Rice actually knocked a woman out, but someone speculated that she spit on him in this video. I haven't slowed it down to that effect to see that and confirm. But this was a very, Roll us on your wrist of plain giant. this was a very violent and turbulent situation. It really was. Leo, can you get down? Get down. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Can you get down? This is a very unfortunate situation. Nonetheless, however, it's not black women's fight. Right? This is footage from February. Again, he died in April. He was 27 years old. She was 26 years old. She was an OnlyFans model. Now, this footage was released by prosecutors who... Um, had they honestly had a heap? They had a whole mountain of of evidence against her. Okay, now she actually kicked him out of their luxury apartment just days before she took the knife and blanked him to death. Right? Again, she was charged with second degree murder. She was found in Hawaii. Right? I was telling you that the day before yesterday. She was in Hawaii when they arrested her. We seen her mugshot and all that other stuff. She was allegedly in rehab in Hawaii, but they still came and got her. The evidence, it, it, it spoke for itself. It, it was not circumstantial. Um, she seemed to be extradited to Miami, despite the fact that she was arrested in Hawaii. Now, it came out in court that she was on the phone with her mom. Hmm. She was on the phone with her mom at the time of the unfortunate situation when she was using that knife and um, really taking that black man out. And she felt that Toby was lying about something. She felt that Christian Toby Obamselli was being untruthful. She felt that he was potentially cheating. And uh, apparently her mom was staying at the house a couple of days before, but she had just recently left when this fight had took, recently left like within the last couple of days when this fight took off. Now, due to the fact that she was on the phone with her mom at the time of the really violent encounter, her mom was telling her, don't talk to the police. Um, but do mention self-defense. Well, she kind of like didn't take that advice all the way. Yeah, she mentioned self-defense, but she spent all this extra time talking, 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 incriminating herself. And the basically she ended up going to court and saying that she threw a knife across the room, <laughs> okay? She says she threw a knife across the room. And that is how he was stabbed. Now, mind you, he was stabbed multiple times, but the knife penetrated his skin, a vital artery, eight centimeters. You don't throw a knife across the room 
And, and see, here's the difference is she said that she said that he had pinned her up against the wall um, by her throat, grabbed her throat and pinned her up against the wall. No strangulation, uh, lacerations, no marks to prove that. And she's a white woman. So look, it's going to show up on a pale woman. OK, you might have a little bit more trouble seeing things like that, maybe if you have dark skin. But if that woman was really strangled, like she say she was, you would have seen it. But but, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, detectives in court pointed out that she had no injuries at the time. OK, she said she threw the knife at him. Detectives pointed out that the wound penetrated his chest eight centimeters and that the wound was pointed downward in particular. So she had to have been close up to, for, for something like that to even have transpired. I mean, like, you don't stab some, you don't throw a knife across the room. It penetrates eight inches and the wound is literally going downward. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. But like I said, this is not a black woman's fight, nor does sitting this one out correlate. Hey, so many people do. I've realized that this is an old situation from April when I did my videos on it, uh, when I when I did my coverage on it. And I realized due to the recent um, arrest and sentencing of her and, and Christian Toby Obamselli is, is his name is buzzing again. People are watching the older videos. And I had somebody comment, a black man commented under the video today and was like, man, that, man, y'all black women need to stop because you know that those tweets that was talking bad about black women, the white girl clearly took his phone and did that. I'm like, stop it. He tweeted that stuff seven years prior. They hadn't even met yet. They were in an on again, off again, toxic relationship for two years that stuff that he had tweeted those very vile things that he had tweeted about black women had nothing to do with that white woman he didn't even know that white woman at the time at least if you're gonna cap and lie for your fave make the lie make sense may this be a learning lesson for those who are watching love who you want to love right you don't have to bash black women in order to love white or non-black women. I mean, you know, to, to be completely, maybe, maybe some black women are offended by y'all dating out. But honestly, we really don't care who you screw. The fact of the matter is you decided to degrade and joke on and talk trash. You talked about black women like they were the scum on your shoe. Look at this. I, I, I just have a few tweets on this thumbnail I did when I talked about this situation. The way black girls are a disgrace. One of my followers, black girls are born knowing how to shake their ass. Me, honestly, I don't care because they're not my type. He says several things that was so ridiculously inappropriate about black women. More than just these three tweets that I have on the thumbnail. So the fact that you felt the need to drag black women in order to uplift and indulge in white women or non-black women, that's the reason why black women are sitting this one out. And you know that black men are sensitive or people are sensitive when they're like, oh, you you black women, it's y'all don't got to be doing this. It's not about why are you taking offense? I'm not even saying he deserved to die because I don't give a shit what you did, right? Just because you might have been cheating on her doesn't mean that she had the right to kill you in cold blood. I'm just saying I'm not using my voice to advocate and make noise about this. And it's about time that black women realize their power when it comes to people who are protesting and people who are advocating for change without the shadow of a doubt. It is black women for the most part. We have power. We have the passion. We have the resiliency. We have the tenacity to continue to do that. It is a superpower of ours to be that empathetic and to care. And we have to stop lending it to places that would never reciprocate that for us. If it were us and Toby, Christian Toby Obamselli was watching it, he would laugh and tweet more ignorant shit about us. So why should we be wasting our very valuable energy? Because it is very valuable when we use our influence, our power and our resources to advocate and protest for justice of our people. Why should we be giving that away freely to niggas who literally fucking hate us, who drag us for a living, for fun, for sport, 
Absolutely not. I'm sitting this one out. And if you take my silence for hate, nigga, you're triggered and you're projecting. Go ask Becky and them to take up for him. Go ask your homeboys to take up for him. Because coming to my comment section, telling me it's not about color. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be non-black to be anti-black. You don't have to be, you can be black and be anti-black. And a lot of the shit that Christian was saying, God rest his soul, it was anti-black. And people, oh, that was so long ago. How do you, that wasn't who he was. President Day wasn't that long ago. Some of the shit was six years prior, five years prior. And we just forgive anti-black shit like that. Whether they're white, they're black, they're green, well, they're purple. When you say shit like that, that is offensive to black people, unless you take the time to express remorse and redeem yourself, you are not forgiven with time. This is not an expungement process. Time doesn't just get to pass and we forgive you because we make an idiotic assumption that you've changed and you have not expressed any motherfucking action or notion to show us that you really feel different. Oh, come on. He's changed. How do we know? Did he have a come to Jesus moment? Did he have a moment of remorse? Did he ever come out and say, you know what? I was wrong. I never should have said them things. We supposed to assume that because people say anti-black shit that six years later, they don't mean it no more. I don't give a fuck if it's a person that's 37 years old and they said some extremely racist or anti-black shit when they were 17 years old. I'm going to assume that at 36, even though you said it at 16 or 17, if you ain't said nothing to acknowledge how wrong that was, I'm going to assume you feel that same way. I'll be damned if I forgive you because time has passed. We have to stop being that, 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 that naive as black people. Did Emmett Till's, did, did, did that woman that won't get charged for Emmett Till's murder, did she ever come out and say some shit? And if she did, we wouldn't believe her. But I'm just saying, because she being let off the hook now, people, oh, just let her leave because she, oh, has she ever really said that she was wrong? That she should have never done that? That she feels bad? That racism is wrong? She ain't never said no shit like that. And so why should we be granted for getting, and even if she did, I'm be honest, we talk about Emmett Till, that's a big situation. We're not talking about just harmful words. We're talking about the death of somebody. Stop playing with me. Racism is not forgiven with past time. It's forgiven maybe if you express that you're remorseful. That's how it go. I don't give a shit what color you is. So miss me with that shit. I ain't speaking ill on Christian. I'm not speaking ill on him. All I'm saying is I'm sitting this one out. Why are you offended by that? You're offended by that because you realize the power. And, and see, the only people offended by it are black men. Are black men. The black women ain't offended by it. But the black men realize the power that we have as black women. And so they come to us. Oh, y'all need to stop that and speak out. Why won't you speak out? How come you black men are as, are as loud and as strong and as powerful? How come y'all don't have the power to bring him justice? You're calling on us to do it, but he's literally expressed that he hates us. And you still expect us to get up and move. Baby, those days are fucking over. They're over. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Okay. All right. It's not our responsibility to care. Not be damned if you guilt trip me into caring about somebody that didn't give a shit about me, right? I wish his family the best. It sucks they had to bury somebody. But that's just that. Okay. Um, shout out to everybody in the chat. Okay. I see Danny's in the chat. There's a lot of people. Shout out to Danny Robinson. Okay. I see Danny's in the chat, right? And thank you to my mods getting these damn dating sites out of the app. Anyway, let's move on to the next subject, shall we? And if you have having a good time, if you feel like I'm speaking some truth, make sure you at least hit the thumbs up button or you send a cash app or a super chat. Not required, all right? But if you can, do a little something, something, right? Now, let's get into the man that decided to murder George Floyd in cold blood. Oh, it's amazing seeing his mug shots. It's, it's, it, it is, um, I mean, when I tell you it's my favorite song, seeing his mugshot, it is my favorite 
song. But you know what, real quick before I get into that. Christian definitely ignored the signs. That's what I will say. He ignored the signs. And it's sad. I'm not making fun because, listen, I've been in an abusive relationship. And I've talked about that on this channel before. I've ignored signs before. So like I said, let this be a lesson. But he definitely ignored some signs. And so like I said, let this be a lesson to people. That's a mess because he definitely wasn't the aggressor here. He definitely wasn't. Really sad. It it definitely does give those Ray Rice elevator video. Do y'all remember the Ray Rice situation? That was like. That was like a decade ago, wasn't it? Put an eight in the chat if you remember the Ray Rice elevator video. And if you remember that there was two of them, the NFL tried to cover for Ray Rice when only the first half of the video came out. And then there was another half of the video that came out. And then that's when they let him go. But the NFL had access to the full video the whole time. It wasn't until there was a public outcry and the second half of the video leaked that they finally decided, okay, we need to part ways with you because the people are... The people are, they not, they not with it, okay? That I see this, there's people in the chat who remember it. Bet, Andrea, House of Princess, okay? Yeah, they, that Ray Rice thing, because Ray Rice knocked that woman out smooth, quote, and I believe they're still married to this day. They're still married to this day. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big situation. Said this is way worse. Okay, so there's a lot of people who follow. All right, let's get on to the next situation. Okay. <laughs> my channel members in my Discord know that I'm hungry. <laughs> Look, don't play. Like, when I get hangry, I get... Okay, I'm sorry, Leo. That's a key word for him, too. Lord, he understands what that word means. What is it, Leo? Okay, well, I was talking about me. I wasn't talking about you. You ate already. All right? So, if you could just, like, leave me alone for a second, because... I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't talking about feeding you. I wasn't. You you won't have to wait till after the video or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I said one of his keywords. My bad. My bad. Okay. I'm going to keep talking. And I know when I talk loud in your ear, you want to get down. So... I'm going to just go ahead and get loud again so you can get down. Okay? Get down. Get down. Knocking down the damn things. Oh. Let's keep it going, y'all. Because the cat... <laughs> he didn't have too many... <laughs> he had too many let's move on to the next situation y'all see what's on the screen right here right and shout out to all 300 of us in here today and thank y'all for supporting this stream in any way you can subscribe hit thumbs up whatever the case is discrimination surrounding this handling of Derek when he was arrested caused a few people of color to win a large settlement okay 1.5 million dollars you know, I mean, 1.5 million divided by eight. What's that? Let me ask Siri. Hey, Siri. What's 1.5 million dollars divided by eight? 1,500,000 divided by eight is $187,500. Okay. Minus the attorney fees. Okay. So, okay. That's not bad. Let's get into the details of the situation, right? So, eight correctional officers who were barred from literally stepping foot on the floor that Derek was on, right? He gets arrested for violating, for murdering and violating the civil rights of George Floyd. And then he has a nerve to be transported to a facility 
where people of color, because it wasn't just black folk, you had other people too, and I'm going to get into those uh, to, to how they identified as well. Those people couldn't even step foot onto the floor where Derek was because they weren't allowed to. Let's get into it. So we know that George Floyd was unalived on May 25th, 2020. Derek was arrested for the murder of George Floyd on... Um, he, he was arrested and he was taken into Ramsey County Adult Detention Center. He got 21 years, um, a, a federal sentence for violating George Floyd's civil rights. Now, all of these eight officers were people of color who said they were barred from interacting or even stepping foot onto the floor where Derek was while he was awaiting trial for the death of George Floyd. Now, the officers identify as African-American, Hispanic, a Pacific Islander, American and a multiracial um, person. So they made up the eight different people, those uh, different races or nationalities of people. Um, alleged former jail superintendent, his name was Steve Linden. He prohibited all officers of color from guarding Derek or entering the floor where he was being held. Now the order, this was an order. This was a legitimate order from the superintendent of the jail. The order was rescinded just an hour later. Now, this was according to a resolution in the lawsuit that was filed, right? Now, the jail superintendent reportedly told his superiors that he made the decision to, quote, protect and support minority employees by keeping them away from the former Minneapolis police officer. An internal investigation was launched where the superintendent at the time made a statement about why he made the decision to ban people. He says, quote, out of care and concern and without the comfort of time, without the comfort of time, stop playing with me. Out of care and concern and without the comfort of time, I made a decision to limit exposure to employees of color to, to a murder suspect who could potentially aggravate those feelings, end quote. So he was later demoted. The superintendent who said black folk, people of color are not allowed on the floor where he is. He was demoted, but he still works. He still works for that very same sheriff's office, which is Ramsey County, which is the same sheriff's office that runs the jail. Now, the officers filed a racial discrimination complaint in June of 2020 with the State Department of Human Rights, but closed it to pursue litigation. The group filed a lawsuit in February of 2021, alleging race and color discrimination in a hostile work environment. Now, the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners voted unanimously this past Tuesday to settle a lawsuit. The settlement required the county to issue a written apology and acknowledge that the order was discriminatory and wrong. Now, the board chairwoman, Trista Matas Castillo, apologized in a statement, quote, for the trauma you experienced and the ongoing harm this racist incident caused. The actions taken by sheriff's office leadership that day were more than just wrong. They were racist. They were heinous, highly disrespectful, and completely out of line with Ramsey County's vision and values. No one should ever have questioned your ability to perform your job based on the color of your skin, end quote. Now, look, hopefully these officers can heal from the effects of the hostile work environment because that is a hostile work environment, right? Um, get 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 what you can get from this situation. Because you know if the roles were reversed, they would have definitely cried Karen, went boohooed, we and, and, and talked about the effect. So I say get it how you live it. But also, you no, know, being treated like that at work, it's not even just about playing a role to get your money. It can be very traumatizing. Like, are you serious? Like anybody who is still a police officer, especially a police officer of color to this day, they put their life on the line to do that. And not just in the sense of anybody putting their life on the line being an officer. A lot of people look at police and people who are in law enforcement like rat ass pigs. That's so to know that just wearing that uniform is going to get black people or people of color to just hate you, to not comply, to give you a hard time. You know, you got some people that just want to shoot any and old cop that they, any and every cop that they see. And so it takes a lot to put on that uniform still and to be treated that way. 
his white privilege working while he's a goddamn inmate. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So I just, it, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. And it can be traumatized. Know that you show up, you're on time, you do your job, and you're treated like you've done something wrong because there's a racist ass inmate in your facility. That doesn't make sense to me. So I think that they get what they, I think they deserved more money, to be honest. I think each of them deserved $1.5 million if we're going to keep it a buck. But, you know, may different districts continue to pay out large lump sums, okay, when they miss the mark in 2022 and moving forward as it pertains to color bias and racial discrimination, because this is just crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Now, now, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and squeeze in some entertainment in between these serious topics because, ugh, uh, I'm happy that these folks got their settlement, although I wish the settlement was a bit more, you know what I'm saying, like $1.5 million minus attorney fees and court fees divided by eight. That's not enough, in my opinion, when it comes to these, you know what I mean, when it comes to these situations, especially high profile payout situations, they should have gotten more, in my opinion, but kudos for, to them for getting something that district having to pay out 1.5 million dollars i don't think that it's going to really teach that district their lesson um especially after shout out to lovely t i hear her talk about the minneapolis area quite frequently there's a lot of corruptness that goes on there as is in a lot of places but child let's move on to the next subject let's pull this bus off to somewhere else okay give them all that plus vacation exactly exactly it's a privilege for me Look at his mugshot. Just, ugh. Ugh. A whole hot mess. Shout out to my moderators. I appreciate y'all so much for working so hard in the chat. All right, let's get into some entertainment stuff. Child, Taylor Swift in court for copyright. Copyright, Taylor Swift versus 3LW. Have y'all heard about this? <laughs> Have y'all heard about Taylor Swift? Versus 3LW, well, versus the writer of a 3LW song, right? So Taylor, Taylor Swift, she been playing bent, and I don't like it. Oh, shout out to the Cash App. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all, okay? Taylor Swift playing bent, and girl, I don't like it. Girl, I'm going to call you out because I think you lying. I think you lying. Um, If you've heard about the Taylor Swift lawsuit versus the 3LW lyrics, drop a four in the chat, Okay? Um, do y'all who remembers who remembers 3LW's hit song? Players they gonna play and haters they gonna hate, ballers they gonna ball, shot callers they gonna call. That ain't all right. I'm done. So yeah, that's the song, right? Came out in 2000, right? Shout out to the 90s, shout out to the 90s kids and the 90s babies because that's what we grew up on, right? I see some fours in the chat. Cool, 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 cool. So the folks are saying, oh, it's not even the folks, the, the lawsuit says Taylor stole some lyrics from their song, okay? Now, Taylor Swift, she continues to deny the claim that she stole lyrics from 3LW's song, right? And <laughs> the writers of the song filed a copyright lawsuit in 2017 saying that she infringed upon the 3LW lyrics, right? There were two people who wrote that song. Now, a judge dismissed that case in 2018, saying that the lyrics were too, quote unquote, banal, right? So let me put this on the screen as I continue so you can understand what banal is if you're not sure, because that's, that's not a typical word in, in, in people's everyday vocabulary, okay? So although the writers of the players, they gonna play, <laughs> although they filed a copyright lawsuit in 2017, a judge dismissed it in 2018, saying that the lyrics were too banal to be stolen but an appeal panel brought the case back in 2019 so taylor swift requested the judge dismiss the case throw it out but on december 9 2019 the judge refused to throw out the case citing that the songs had enough objective similarities now on Monday of this week, Taylor Swift said that the song was written entirely by her. She wrote it all by herself, okay? Now, here's what was said in the court filing, right? Quote, 
until learning about the plaintiff's claim in 2017. Now, this, this, this is Taylor Swift's attorneys, right? Until learning about the writers of 3LW's claim in 2017, I had never heard the song, Play Is Gonna Play, said Taylor Swift. And I had never heard of the group 3LW. So you never heard Play Is Gonna Play and you never heard of 3LW, tell a girl, baby, I'm having a hard time believing it. I'm, I'm having a really hard time believing it because you ain't that old. You ain't that old. How old is Taylor Swift? Because baby, girl, you older than me. Girl, you know who 3LW is. Stop playing. Stop playing these games. Ain't no way. There's no way you avoided the television. Every day. While you were a teenager, you avoided the Disney Channel and the radio and the music videos, and you're a musically inclined person. Girl, you know, it's one thing to say, I ain't steal them lyrics from them, but then when you take it a step further, I don't know about that song. I, I, I don't even know who that is, girl. Not in the 90s, girl. You can't pretend that you grew up on music and you ain't know who 3LW was. It ain't no way. Taylor said, my, my parents didn't allow me to watch MTV's TRL, Total Request Music. They didn't allow me to watch it until I was 13. And the song, bitch, hold up. Until you was 13, the song came out in 2032. Girl, stop playing. You know who 3LW is. Girl, you, mm -mm. no ma'am. No ma'am. Mm -mm. let, me, let me do some quick math. So you was 13, right? Uh-huh, uh, 13. No, because you lying. Uh-uh. Yeah, you lying. Players Going Play came out in 2000, but 3LW was still here and kicking. And you, 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 you never heard of them at all? No, man. I barely need facts to call you out on this shit. I'm only pulling up facts because we on a goddamn live. But, girl, you fucking lying. You not telling me you ain't, mm-mm. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm-mm. See, because you added sauce onto the line. We might have bought it because, I don't know, play is going to play, hate is going to hate. Is that specific to 3LW? Honestly, when, yeah, but then you're going to just, you, you just jumped out the window with the shit. I don't even know who they are, girl. All right, now, now you fucking lying. Now I feel like you listened to the song and you took it. Because at first, I was in the middle. Now, mm-mm. No, ma'am. <laughs> mm-mm. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. And I know you watch the Disney Channel. There is no way you were born in 1990 and you don't know who the Cheetah Girls are. There's no way. We're Cheetah Girls, Cheetah Sisters. We stay together. I don't want to be like Cinderella sitting in a dark old dusty cellar waiting for somebody to come and set me free. I don't want to be like someone waiting. Stop playing. You, if you didn't know who 3LW was, you knew who the Cheetah Girls were. And bitch, half of the Cheetah Girls was 3LW. Bitch, you know who the fuck they were. Stop playing. You strike me as a Disney girl. You strike me as a girl who was watching Disney Channel all day, every day. You strike me as anti-Nickelodeon. Bitch, you know who they was. Don't play. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Adrian Baylon, right? I'm not pronouncing her last name right. But Adrian, okay? Keely, Kylie, whatever. Notri Naughton. Girl, you know who they is. Stop playing. There's no way that you make music and you don't know who they are. And, and, and I hear some of the, the stolen soul sound that you be taking from our music. Girl, mm -mm. you gonna get in court and lie like that? Girl, I hope somebody pulls up a goddamn picture of you with a 3LW poster in the background. Bitch, I hope that somebody pull up a video of you and damn 2004 singing the damn 3LW song. And I hope they take that shit to court. Because I know you lying. You lying. You lying. You, you, and you too old to be lying like this. We know when you grew up. It's not like you was born in 2000. If you was born in 2000, I would get it. But you wasn't. Nigga, you gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. All as you is. All right. Leo, stop it. Stop it, Leo. We're not talking about you. We're talking about 3LW and them. 
He wasn't even born yet. So here's what else she said. Very long quote from, from court. She says, quote, I do not recall listening to any... No, hold on. Let me put on the Taylor voice. <clears throat> Dang, the only white girl voice that I really know how to do is Britney Spears. I don't know how to do a Taylor Swift voice. What am I going to do? Okay, let me try. I do not recall listening to any specific radio stations during that time. But when I listened to radio, it was generally country music. I did not watch the MTV show TRL. And I, I did not go to clubs during this time. The lyrics to Shake It Off also draw from commonly used phrases and comments heard throughout my life. Prior to writing Shake It Off, I heard the phrases, players going to play and haters going to hate, uttered countless times. I'm going to let you know. We don't believe you. <laughs> Girl, we don't believe you. You lying. <laughs> Why the fuck you lying? Why you always? Girl, she lying. I don't got no time. I don't got no time. Girl, you lying. Girl, the play is going to play and the haters going to hate. And at this point, you trying to play the court system and you're trying to play with our intelligence. And bitch, we caught you. We caught you. We caught you on candy camera now. You lying. Mm -mm. Bye. Next case. Next case. I hope Kaya drag your ass too because that'd be something I'd pay money for. <laughs> Bye. Next caller. Because, girl, you fucking tried it. <laughs> Somebody teach her how to lie. Somebody teach her. Education, special education, psychiatric medication, juvenile incarceration, emotional frustration, and premature extermination. <laughs> Perfectly unordinary said, now I don't feel bad for what Kanye did to her. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, crazy. All right, y'all. Let's we're gonna get serious so that we can get unserious. That's what we gotta do, right? Because it's time to get into R. Kelly and his fiance girl. I, I I I truly do. I truly need a minute and a half to get myself together. Y'all know R. Kelly is my um specialty because I do like exposing his bitch ass. Um <clears throat> but it's time to get into the R. Kelly part. Y'all see the second, the second part of, of, of the title of this video. We need to talk about his fiance. How was my white girl voice? Was it good? Because I tried to make this white girl voice different from the Britney Spears voice. Because I do a really good Britney Spears impersonation. I can't do it right now, but I do do a, I do a really good Britney. I tried to make this one different, <laughs> different than the Britney, right? All right. So it's time to get into, um, it's time to get into R. Kelly. So I, I, I do need a minute and a half breather before I get into R. Kelly. Do me a favor. If you haven't already taken the time to subscribe to the channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. We can fight. We can fight. Baltimore stand out. We can fight. Subscribe to the damn channel. Hit the damn thumbs up button. I'm going to talk to you like you the cat. All right? <laughs> and let's come right back and let's discuss R. Kelly, shall we? Put some pancakes in the chat too. So let's see if you really bout about it. If you've been serious about what you've been saying about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. I found a spot for us to grab our hats, hoodies, affordable electronics, phone accessories, and gadgets from. It's over on edwardso.com. That's E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. Grab something for your hubby, your wife. Hey, I ain't encouraging that side chick behavior, but it's just in time for the holidays. So head on over there and grab your AirPod cases, hoodies, and affordable electronics. That's edwerso.com, E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. And I'll see you over there. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm The Plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup.
All right, now we're back. Now let's get into it. Let's go ahead and um and get our energy up to discuss R. Kelly because y'all know we got that remix over here. And then let's get right into it because y'all know this remix. This remix be bumping. With oh children. my god! It's time to get into his nasty ass. Let's go. Baltimore, I can't see you. Where you at? Don't tell me with this. I can't help fucking Robert. I can't help fucking Will. Don't stop dealing questions. You're killing me, man. This ain't not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. So I just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. Man, don't kill me with this. Don't kill me with this. Don't kill me with this. Is y'all crunk? Do you got your passports? Do you got your shots? <clears throat> it's going to be one of the next clips I make. Let me write that down real quick. Do you got your shots? Do you got your passport? Do y'all got your passports and y'all shots? To go talk about R. Kelly? Because you, you need shots to talk about R. Kelly. If you ain't got your shots, it is not safe for you to be. <laughs> you're going to get infected even listening to this information. Infected with a disease, infected with stupidity. I mean, I just, I don't know. Something. You're at risk. You're at risk if you are listening to the damn, to the R. Kelly information. You're at risk. Prepare yourself, okay? It's the truth. And I'm not playing. <clears throat> Child, Joycelyn says she's pregnant. We know that Joycelyn Savage is R. Kelly's alleged fiance according to the court documents, according to a letter that she wanted to write to get some sympathy and leniency for Robert before he got sentenced to 30 years for being the fucking creep and pedophile that he is. Now, my grandmother used to tell me it's a sucker born every minute. It's a sucker born every minute, right? And apparently, Joycelyn got this book coming out, <laughs> a memoir. Oh, yeah, she got this book coming out where um you know she reveals that she's pregnant she says r kelly is the father do y'all know how long r kelly been incarcerated and you know when he's in federal prison he can't have you know the visits that would allow him so again she's writing this jaw-dropping book very elaborate book a whopping 11 page book um, imagine writing an 11 page book and thinking you're doing something. I mean, like you writing about, bitch, I could write a book about R. Kelly that's not going to 11 pages. Like, what are you talking about? Like all the information is out here. But all right, she's selling this 11 page book. She even showed us an ultrasound. Let's um go ahead and zoom into that. <clears throat> Y'all see this? This is supposed to be Robert's child. Look, I got some dark jokes, but I'm going to keep them to my damn self about this. Y'all make your own jokes about this. What, is this. what does this look like? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me chill because hell is hot. Hell is hot. That's supposed to be her and Robert's baby. She says she's pregnant. She contacted the New York Post. I told you, my grandmother told me that it's a sucker born every minute. And let's get into the details. I just want to see if y'all can keep a straight face while we get into this. Okay? <laughs> it's not a pamphlet. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I was not supposed to bust out laughing like that. <laughs> Stop. 
<laughs> All right. Stop. So. <laughs> this is why I had to get myself together. Joycelyn told the New York Post that the book was going to be published on <laughs> on Saturday. She said, she, matter of fact, she said it should be published by Saturday. And I want to show you, just, j just so you know, I'm not making this shit up. I'm going to show it to you on the actual page, not even the screenshot. Y'all know a lot of times I like to bring y'all a raw screenshot to save all that. <clears throat> but let me show you this, because it's two different articles from the New York Times. And she told him two different things. So I'm going to show you this first one, right? Where she said that the book was going to be released on Saturday. Okay, so here we go, right? In an email to the Post, Joycelyn, who was 26 years old, confirmed that the book will be called Love and Joy of Robert and should be published on Saturday. Not should be published, not should be. Should be. Should be. So you contacted them on the 11th, which if we're going with today is Friday, even though it's er technically early Saturday morning for me anyway, you contacted them on Thursday and said it should be out by Saturday, right? But then you contacted them and told them something else. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that, right? So, um, matter of fact, I'm going to show y'all the Amazon link in a second. Bl <clears throat> Trying not to get ahead of myself, right? So, but apparently the book released today, though, the 11-page book, and it's $5. Now, would you pay $5 for a little Joycelyn book? Would you pay would you pay five dollars? Would you pay five dollars to read what Joyce and got to say? Because I mean, I I read her letter. Y'all, I'll be reading all the court documents and stuff like that. You know, so I read the letter that she had wrote to the judge. My fiance is a good man. He never abused me. I'm not a victim. Da 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 da. da. Would you pay for? I see some hell no's. Put put a nine in the chat if you would not buy it. If you ain't finna buy that shit, put a nine in the chat. If you would buy it, put a one in the chat. A nine in the chat. If you wouldn't buy it, there's no way that art that 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 Joycelyn could sell you a 499 11 page book. Put a nine in the chat if it ain't happening. Put a one in the chat if you would do it just for shits and giggles. Oh shit, not all these nines. <laughs> not all of these nines, though. Oh, it's a lot of y'all. Oh, y'all filled the chat with the nines. Oh shit, yeah. I'm I'm not supporting him or her. Or the future singing baby. <laughs> she doesn't strike me as very intelligent. Child. They said, I need my $5. Okay, it's a lot of nines in the chat. As a matter of fact, I don't even see any ones. It's a one because I'm nosy. Here's the thing, Fior. You see, you one of the only ones. Here's the thing. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it because I want to tell you about the fuck shit that's in it. So I'm going to buy it. Hold your horses. The channel members are going to get it first. About... Two days after the channel members get it, I'll let the rest of y'all know. I'm going to spend my little measly $4.99 ass dollars just to let y'all know the type of bullshit that's on it. <laughs> just so y'all can know, okay? That's a magazine, not a book, okay? The other person. Just a handful of ones, okay? And are you not embarrassed? This is embarrassing. <laughs> It is. It's it's very. But you don't go to the New York Times and announce 11 pages. There's so much she could have wrote about. There's so much she could have wrote about. And I'm not trying to, you know, make excuses or give her ideas of how to profit off of that nasty situation that she's in. But she is in a very nasty, high profile, polarizing situation that easily, easily she could write over. 11 pages about there's no reason that you know I just... my grandmother told me that there's a sucker born every minute you know and unfortunately unfortunately 
unfortunately, Rashida said not five dollars for eleven dollars. Unfortunately, um, Joyce and then falls there. She falls there. Okay, so mm. that, that. But let's get into the details of the situation. Let's read it. Okay, I can't even buy a sandwich from Chick Fil A for five dollars. That's true. Chick Fil A be Chick Fil A be up there in the price. Okay. So let's get into the details of this 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 tell-all book. Matter of fact, I'm really going to show it to y'all on Amazon. I'm going to show it to y'all in a second. Okay? But she says she's pregnant. I want to get into the details that she gave to the New York Post. You know, and honestly, Joycelyn, Joycelyn Jocelyn, she doesn't seem to have it all. Her parents believe she has Stockholm Syndrome. And with her being so young and having had met R. Kelly when she was 19 years old, was she technically legal? Yes. But did a lot of y'all have a lot of common sense at 19 years old? Um, it, it still feels like she's under the spell of R. Kelly. But let's go ahead and get into the details, okay? <clears throat> she says she's pregnant. We've got this book called Love and Joy of Robert. 26-year-old mother-to-be writes in her tiny tell-all. <laughs> the New York Post is shady as hell for tiny tell-all. She writes in her tiny tell-all, which is only 11 pages, and out on Friday on Amazon that she found out she was expecting months after R. Kelly sent an engagement ring to her home, which was the day after he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. So he sent a ring to your home 30 days after he was sentenced to 30 years. And you saying the baby hit. All right. Here's a quote from the book. It says, well, either a quote. Yeah, this is a quote from the book. Months later, I began expecting severe morning sickness and was unsure what was wrong with my body. I thought I contracted the Rona. But the most amazing news of all was that I was expecting, end quote. She says, I was happy, but it was an incomplete time of my life. But today I'm grateful to God for giving me the most precious gift. Our Kelly is extremely excited about the news that I'm having a baby. And he feels sad that he won't be here with us. He won't be able to be here with us. So again, she sent this picture of this ultrasound child. And they said, um, Joycelyn said that the ultrasound was the only image that R. Kelly would clear for publication in the new expose. So apparently Joycelyn says, yes, Robert approved the book and his team has read it through. I wanted pictures of us at concerts and at his house and lying down together. I told them I wanted exactly what happened. However, there were moments I didn't include in this book because I wanted to have a happy ending and a story with Robert. I live in one of Robert's condos and I'm working on my next book, which will reveal a lot about him. And that has been tampered with by the media, many secrets, mm, end quote. So R. Kelly's representatives have not commented about this. And it does remain unclear how far along Joycelyn Savage allegedly is in this pregnancy. But she did reveal to the New York Post that there will be a quote unquote second volume of the memoir released next year. And she's still hoping for him to be released and to prepare for new beginnings. So it's a short, but they claim it is a jaw-dropping read. It's her version of events leading to her living with R. Kelly. She wrote that her life prior to meeting R. Kelly at 19 years old was emotionally and mentally draining and alleged that family members touched her. Oh, okay. So here's a quote from the book. It says, family members touching you, despite knowing you were aware of the situation, felt as if it was okay for them to do so. It felt normal to me that I was able to voice my feelings to my parents when all they did was ignore my pain, end quote. Okay, so she's blaming her parents for some things. Allegedly, she's coming out about some stuff that she endured, um, you know, according to her rendition of the situation. So that's that. Um we know that Joycelyn's parents have been very vocal in pleading for her to come back home. 
<laughs> that she has Stockholm syndrome. We know Timothy Savage, her mother's name is Jonjolin Savage. And yeah, they've been very vocal about trying to get their daughter back, even with our Kelly being, uh, you know, incarcerated all this time. Um, it's been well over three years that he's been in jail. So <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. I didn't mean to laugh. But the question is, who's the baby's pappy? Who is the baby's pappy? That's what I want to know. Because you acting like it's R. Kelly's child and he's in federal prison where he can't have, what do, what do they call it? Conju a certain type of visit. Where you 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 get a little separate room and y'all can do a little sign. sign. It, they don't allow that in federal prison. Okay? So who the baby pappy? R. Kelly's happy about all this. Um, is he really? Oh, children? my God. Is he really? I don't know, Joyce. Like, I don't know, girl. It's not even that I don't know, girl. I do know. I'm trying to, trying to play it nice. Cause I'm, because, girl, you need help. That That's really that's really the tea. That's the syrup here. It's that you need help. And he got you. He got the shackles on your feet so you can't dance. Girl, you need to dance. Okay. Got the shackles on my feet so I can dance. I just want Girl, get free. He is never going to see the light of day. He's got several more trials to go through. And you busy. That's my man. I'm going to stick beside him. Girl, what is you sticking beside? A ghost? A non-existent person? Girl, they already seizing money. Girl, get out while you can girl get out but girl you don't get it you don't get it girl so i ain't gonna waste my time girl i ain't gonna waste my time you don't get it she don't get it let me keep going oh let me keep going mm -mm. she don't get it so <laughs> girl get free yes like get free <laughs> What's going on, girl? Get out. Have you not seen Get Out? It's not just about a racial situation. It's about, like, when you feel like you held hostage and you under somebody else's control. Girl, get the... F girl, you free and you still acting, being secluded. And I... Girl, all right. I ain't gonna go in on you. I ain't gonna go in on you. Here's some more she said in the book. Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. An attorney for her parents told the Post that they don't have any comment. Now, in the book, Joycelyn says that she recalls the night she went to R. Kelly's concert when she was 19 years old. And she wrote that she was eager to catch his attention and that one of the girls um, got backstage. She recalls R. Kelly, wait a minute, putting his hand on my hip, gripping my butt and calling me beautiful in various flattering names. Girl, why would you? I mean, I get it. You was 19. You know what I mean? Like you had the right. I can calculate when he was 19 and how old he was and still call him a creep. Okay. So he grabbed your hip. He grabbed your butt. And you put that, you, 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 you put that in the book because you thought it was smart. Where the fuck is the book? It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep, really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. She put that in the book because she thought it was smart, and that's why I say I say bless her soul because she don't she don't got it all upstairs. She don't got it all, you know. The mall is open, no one's shopping. The lights are on at home, no one's there. Elevator don't go all the way to the top. Not the sharpest knife in the jaw. Not the brightest crayon in the box. But let's keep it pushing. Put his hand on my hip. He gripped my butt. Called me beautiful. Okay. She sang for him that night. And we still have yet to hear if Joyce Lynn can really sing. I don't think she can sing. I don't even think that she thinks she can sing. I think that she tried to bust a regular shower note for him that night. 
and that was that. I mean, I, I've heard Joycelyn's sister sing rap. I, I've heard Asriel, but Joycelyn, I mean, she just she's just there. She sang for him that night, and R. Kelly brought her to a record a recording studio after the show, where all his friends constantly told him, "I think you found the next Aaliyah." I went to the bush too early. Girl, not you comparing yourself to Aaliyah. Why would you ever compare yourself to Aaliyah? You gonna tell this story in this book like you, you the next Aaliyah. For, for... I have no faith in Robert, but I don't even think Robert would say that. I really don't even think Robert would say that. If he was gonna say it about anybody, he would say it about Azriel, maybe, but... Girl, you, we never even heard, girl, cause, girl, not, not Joyce and then the next elite, you know, I, I get tired of these comparisons. Can somebody help me? I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I really am. Him and his homies told me I'm the next Aaliyah. Well, girl, how come you ain't? How come you ain't out here singing? At least Asriel is. And Asriel actually has a really nice voice. Anyway. Joycelyn said that R. Kelly asked her to live with him in Atlanta so he could help her with her music career, which we've never seen a trace of. Okay. But the... Mm. It was a very curious moment for me at the time, but I was cautious nonetheless. How are you going to say you was cautious while dealing with R. Kelly and you still there and you won't leave? You was cautious at that time, but you still being a, you know what I mean? Like a full nail, baby. Baby girl, you need help. So he asked her to live with him. She said, my answer was yes, but I'm still in college. He responded, daddy has everything you need right here. He pulled out a stack of cash. I was concerned about the money at the time. I just wanted to improve my music. I was always persuaded by him with money, saying I shouldn't leave because this is an opportunity that no one else will ever have. And if I leave, I'll regret it. She was concerned about missing her college classes, but R. Kelly convinced her to stay in his guest house for three days and write music. Girl, what you done wrote? She recalled the time that R. Kelly bought her regular and very sexy and grown-up outfits to wear since she didn't have many clothes with her. And you think that this is helping his case. Baby, this is not helping his case. It might be telling whatever story you think it's going to tell, but who is this helping? Who is this helping? You were 19 and he just moved you in that quick and said you was the next Aaliyah and bought you all this lingerie and you was 19. That you you were still young as hell. Bitch, let me get to Googling. Hold up. How old? How old? I'm going to calculate some years at this point. Date of birth, 95. Okay, hold on. What dates was we talking about here? Let me get back here. Where we at in this article? You was 19. You was born in 95. Mm-hmm. 2014, he buying you lingerie. How old was R. Kelly in 2014? 67. What was that, 2014? 47 years old, damn that 50. Please stop playing with me. 47 years old. You had just turned 19 years old, girl. He had been had his eye on you. You had been had his eye on him. 
I'm going to leave it right there because I got more that I want to say, but I'm going to keep it cute. I had no clue why he bought me these hoary outfits. Oh, bitch, you called the outfits hoary yourself? You called them hoary? Oh, girl, I can't wait to read this book backstage to my people. Oh, my God. <laughs> girl, I just... <laughs> why did he buy me these hoary outfits? You... It's a Jan, you're almost done with the pamphlet. There's nothing left to buy. That's what I'm saying. You said in the letter to the judge that you're not a victim. He's sweet. You've always been willing. Now you said he bought you lingerie and you don't lingerie and you don't understand why he was buying you these hoary outfits until his assistant informed you that he wanted you to wear it for an occasion, which was a spandex and see-through bra. I didn't question it thinking perhaps he wanted me to look cute. R. Kelly came into her room that night, sat on her bed and asked, who's daddy? She replied, you. Oh, girl. Girl, what is going on? And he replied, good girl. Oh, bitch, you acting like a dog. Girl, you ain't had to tell us that. Whatever little kid. She said kinky sexual acts followed, which became a nightly routine for the both of them. Joycelyn became used to it, although one act made her feel compelled to vomit, but she didn't. Girl, at what point was you thinking that this was going to help your man's case? At what point did you think that this was going to help your man's case? Oh, girl, I hope they pull this book up and they use it in the next trial. You know, this leads me to believe that... I don't know. Oh, she said, it turned me off. But he thought whatever I wanted if I did that for them. Wait, It turned me off, but he bought whatever I wanted if I did it. Oh, girl, so he was buying the ability to be able to treat you that way, although you wanted to vomit and it turned you off. He bought you handbags and new titties. Because I see he bought you new titties. Um, Asriel was open about getting, uh, you know, some new enhancements to her body. But I, I know that you had got. Now, what? She also revealed the comparisons to R. Kelly's first wife and then Aaliyah. I'm sorry, R. Kelly's first wife, who was Aaliyah. As much as he wanted me to become his Aaliyah, he was afraid of losing me, which led to him be becoming extremely... Bitch, I know it's not a grammatical error in this book. Hold up. As much as he wanted me to become his Aaliyah, he was afraid of losing me, which led to him become... Oh, I got to show y'all this article because it's a whole grammatical error. And the New York Post is quoting this. If it's in the book, baby, I'm going I'm, I'm to tear it up in flames. See, I try not to be an English teacher. You know, they be clearing your papers up with the red pen. But, uh, uh, yeah. Let's, let's get down to exactly where I am with this reading so that you all can see the grammatical error for yourself. Okay. Ooh. Not his sexy little Aaliyah. Okay, so you see this sentence? This is where I'm at. It says, as much as he wanted me to become his Aaliyah, he was afraid of losing me which led to him becoming extremely demanding, obsessive over me and unable to let me leave his sight at all. Okay, so I said becoming, but it says become. This is the word that's not correct. And you see how the New York Times has it in quotation marks? So if you read this sentence with the word become instead of becoming, because I automatically corrected it when I read it, because that's just how I am. As much as he wanted me to become his Aaliyah, he was afraid of losing me, which led to him become extremely demanding, obsessive over me, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, what this means is they copied and pasted this from the book and there's a grammatical error in the book. Goodbye. Please, goodbye. 
Please goodbye. Who did she publish this by that she couldn't even get a little Grammarly on it? You know what I mean? Grammarly don't even cost much of anything. I guess she felt like because it was an 11 page book, she didn't need to have it proofread by anybody. Or maybe she felt like her homegirls proofread it good enough. But no. But no. So let's move on. Robert started to call me his sexy little Aaliyah. Or sometimes just Aaliyah. Girl, I do not believe R. Kelly was calling you Aaliyah. I mean, I know he's sick. And I ain't trying to take up for him. Your energy, the way you speak, the way you look. I ain't never heard you sing. You don't have that captivating type of... Uh, I just, I, I don't see it. I don't see that. I never thought that I would be opposed to an R. Kelly accusation until I was today years old. I just don't see that. But, um, you know, this your book. This your book. Robert started to call me his sexy little Aaliyah or sometimes just Aaliyah, but I would have to remind him that I'm Joy. She also claimed that R. Kelly's team was paid very well and signed NDAs to not speak bad about him or reveal any hidden secrets. Yeah, this is starting to get weird. She began touring with R. Kelly. And said that that's when the girls who would get backstage at his shows were strangely young. Oh, baby, who wrote this? Not. Oh, my God, I can't wait to read this backstage. Part of me feels like I just want to stop. How much do they got right here? Why would Joyce Lynn, why would his fiance, now I'm, now I'm starting to think about this. Why would his fiance say, yeah, the girls were strangely young behind the, you know what I mean? Like if you're taking up for him, if you're trying to deny that he's ever done anything wrong, how would this even be true? I don't know. Some ain't right here. I want to show y'all the quote so y'all don't think it's a game. And I can't wait to read the book in its entirety. And maybe even show y'all because they got like, the Kindle version of it. Yeah, Leo. She began touring. The girl. Okay, so look. Why would his fiance, who's been trying to proclaim his innocence and take up for him, why would his fiance say this? She began to. Okay, so Joycelyn became began. began excuse me touring with R. Kelly and said that the girls who would get backstage at his shows were strangely young. Why would Joycelyn put that in a book when she's supposed to be taken up for her man? Is she switching sides? Is she, you know, and, and, and part of it is like, oh, Robert approves of the book. How would Robert approve of a book that says that there were strangely young women i don't know so, i don't know something's weird here let me get through this because i'm sick of this nasty ass story mm -mm. she says i couldn't say much about it in the book another younger girl joined r kelly and joycelyn savage on tour and joycelyn said that robert had the girls get nasty with each other and would also record the two girls doing things with him you know what? This doesn't honestly, now that I get into this, this doesn't this doesn't seem like it's written by Joycelyn. Robert would not approve of an incriminating book like this explicitly detailing him with young women because that's been something he's been adamant about lying about all this time. It really has. Her mama John, uh, hello. It's, it's definitely giving the vibes that maybe Joycelyn's peoples wrote this. And it would make sense if her mother wrote it. Something about this. Robert would never admit to that. Robert doesn't admit to his lies. Robert is going to lie to the wheels fall off. He is not going to admit to messing with young children. He is not going to admit. I'm not taking up for him. I just know how he lies. And some people, the way that they lie, like, this ain't it. And she talking about, oh, Robert approved this book. And then, like I said, I showed you the first article. 
which came out on the 10th. This is the article that came out on the 11th. On the 10th, there was conflicting information about the release date of the book when it comes to the article that was released on the 11th, which is this article that I'm talking about right here. Like, no, something about this just doesn't seem right. And I hate to say that because I ain't trying to take up for R. Kelly, but I know he's not the type to admit what he's done. He's not. She said the other girl became bipolar while living under R. Kelly's roof and missed her family. Oh, they talking about Ezra. Even when he was sent to jail, R. Kelly allegedly didn't want the girls to split up or live on their own. Joyce said they received daily media training in case they were ever asked to speak about R. Kelly. And the other girl was eventually released back to her family and smeared my name all over social media. <sighs> Child. Yeah, something's not right. Something's not right about this. Mm hmm. I think our mother wrote. Yeah, the Popeyes do look good. Something ain't right. They said whoever wrote it can barely read. That's for sure. You know, it, it's not difficult to think that Joyce and the did it because Joyce and the don't have a whole bunch of. Joyce has been extremely quiet this whole time. Why well, say something now? Maybe as we are. Oh, that's a good question. That's good. We, you know, we we don't know. We don't know. Let's move on to the next story because this was really nasty. What do y'all think about this? What do y'all think about this? Y'all had me calculating dates and ages and all that other type of stuff. Yes, Leo. What's going on? What's going on? What do you want? Say hi to the people. Say hello. Gone. Gone about your business. Gone. Okay. Now, look, like I said, it's a sucker born every minute. And she told the New York Post <laughs> that the book was going to be published on Friday. Then she turned around in another exchange and said that it was going to be out on Saturday. But then it released on Friday, which is a day. And look, if you're saying that R. Kelly is the father of your children, bless your heart. Or, or of your child, I'm sorry. If you're saying that this ultrasound is R. Kelly's child, right? The child that you're carrying is R. Kelly. Truly, girl, bless your heart. I can't wait to buy the book and read it backstage. But, girl, there's no way that that child is R. Kelly's. There's no way. If you think that the um, that it was R. Kelly who really got her pregnant, um, I recommend you get a, a, a mental eval, too. I talk about mental health all the time. Get a mental evaluation. If you need it, you need it. Get it. <laughs> get it get it okay because something's not clicking if you really think that that's R. Kelly's child something's not clicking okay they said she's not pregnant or writing books look I'm not sure if I believe that you know I'm like she I, I want to reverse google image search this but you know a million different ultrasounds will pop up as well um honestly I ain't gonna lie I don't believe it either however I'm like, let, let's go ahead and go ahead and, and, and talk about this information in her own words. Joycelyn said she's pregnant. Let's talk about how pregnant by R. Kelly. Let's talk about how stupid that idea is, is that she's pregnant by R. Kelly. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. But we had to talk about it. We had to talk about it. Okay. Let's move on to the next subject. What do you want? Why are you... What? You're not getting nothing else. It's too late. I feel like treats are like sugar. It's 2.30 in the morning. And you trying to get treats and things. It's not happening. Let's move on to the next subject. 360 of us here. 278 thumbs up. Thank y'all so much. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Let's move on to the next subject as we talk about some of the best black news and celebrity entertainment out here by none other than your girl the plainest jane hey thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news all right all right all right let's get back into this let's get into this florida teacher who literally quit his job because of martin luther king 
I know that sounds crazy, don't it? It's not that he quit his job because of Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther King has something to do with why this white man quit his job in this situation, okay? So it seems like now you can't even honor black heroes in your classrooms anymore. That's crazy. <laughs> like, that is absolutely crazy. So let's get into this situation, okay? A teacher in Florida went ahead and resigned after he says a school district employee removed photos of historic black American figures from a bulletin board in his classroom. So his name was Michael James. This was a teacher. He reported the incident that occurred at OJ Simmons Elementary School to both um, the county superintendent and the Florida governor in an email. Now, he told um, the paper that he chose the theme for his bulletin board because the majority of students in his class are Black, and he wanted to showcase leaders that his students could look up to and see themselves in. So he said that the images removed from the board included Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman, Colin Powell, and George Washington Carver, and that an image of former President Barack Obama on his desk was also removed. Now, after sending the letter to governor, to the governor on Monday night, he's 61 years old. He said he officially quit. He resigned from his post as an exceptional student education, um, an ESE teacher is what they call them, teaching students ranging, ranging from kindergarten to fifth grade on Tuesday. Now, it was going to be his first year teaching in Florida, so he said that teachers are allowed to decorate their classrooms with educational materials. And he's not aware of any policies in place that would call for the employee's decision to take down the images. So he said the, um, you know, the incident was just, it was annoying. It was nominally, and it was, it, it's currently being investigated. And, you know, imagine just sending your child to school and having a teacher that understanding that representation matters and showing them images of people that look like them, that are the same color as them, putting images like that up, successful black folk or people of color, it's, it's, it's helpful to them. Representation matters. And, um, it, it, it's just crazy that somebody came into his classroom and some people were upset that he quit. They're like, oh my goodness, why did he quit? The district needed him, so on and so forth. But I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Uh, there's already a teacher shortage. There's a lot you got to deal with teaching these kids, especially when you're dealing with a lot of parents who really just don't, they, like, they just aren't as connected. They feel like you're the babysitter, teach my kid everything. And this was a white teacher who quit. Like, if I can't have Martin Luther King and Harriet Tubman up on the wall, then I'm out of here because y'all are bonkers. I think it's only going to get worse as it pertains to the shortage of teachers and especially quality teachers. Okay. So this is a, yeah, OJ Simmons. This is a really unfortunate situation though, to be quite frank. Um, it's not spelt like OJ Simmons. It's spelt OJ the I say Simmons because it's spelled S E M M E S. So yeah, it's spelled OJ S E M M E S elementary school. Um, but yeah, this is crazy that this is happening in an elementary school that am I confined to only uh, putting up posters and sharing white or non-black heroes with my class. I'm not allowed to talk about black heroes. You know, racism is still very much alive in general. The school system makes it even worse, but they really have been concealing it. Shout out to Kanye when he used to be more sane. Racism still alive. They just been concealing it, to be completely honest with you. Um, and that's a really sick and unfortunate situation. I would love to hear from the parents of some of the issues that they're having with the school system because it seems that now we're being pushed into this time where everyone is having to consider private schooling. Even if they don't actually do private school, everyone, all the parents are being forced to at least consider private schooling, which can you know, lead to another problem. But I ain't trying to fear monger or anything like that. I'll speak about the issue of the surge of the, the, the private school demand 
I'll talk about that on another day, but it does open us up to more problems, um, you know, as a society and it, it, specifically as a black society, but that's for a whole nother day. But this was a story that I thought definitely needed to be discussed. Um, and it's fucked up. That, that, that's the, the, the best way to simplify it. It's fucked up. Okay. <laughs> So let's get into the next situation. Brittany Griner, child. Brittany Griner over there in Russia. And this is this is so sad. It, it really is. Mind you, there's a lot of people that are locked up based off of marijuana convictions that really should be released here on the States or rallying to get Brittany back. And, and she should definitely be back. Um, and if America is doing all that they can do to get Brittany out, they should definitely be doing things to get the people here in America that they do have legitimate control and legislation over. Um, they should be doing all that they can do to get them out as well. Shout out to Miss Lisa Wims, 55 for the 99 cent super sticker. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, so look, Brittany may be able to receive, or I'm sorry, to revive her basketball career. She might have the opportunity to coach women's basketball while she serves her nine year sentence in Russia following her arrest. She still has to take a job. That's the thing. Like they, they have to be tasked with employment while behind bars, like any other inmate, despite the potential prisoner swap that we're still really trying to understand if it's on the table, if it's realistic, if it's not. Now, while most prisoners work eight hours a day, cooking, serving, cleaning, doing laundry, et cetera, Brittany might be able to do what she loves because of her special skills. So her coaching basketball to inmates, it really isn't too far um, or too much of a stretch considering how Russian soccer players, Alexander, Kakarin, and Pavel Mamayev taught their profession while they served out sentences in Russian jail. So even who is the vice president of the Russian Department of the International Human Rights Defense Committee, he says, quote, I hope that she'll be sent to a colony with a lenient governor who allows her to coach basketball in the daytime rather than being a seamstress. Prisoners are encouraged to play sports or do yoga and so on. And basketball is pretty popular here. I think that, um, I think that that would be the best thing for her, end quote. So there are reportedly 35 women's penal colonies spread across Russia, but the name of Brittany's colony hasn't been released. Either way, it'll be up to the prison governor to decide if she can coach or not. Now, despite not knowing Brittany's exact location, they said that all of the colonies are similar when it comes to space. The prison cells are about 11 feet of private space, which isn't much when 40 to 60 women allegedly sleep in bunk beds inside the same cell. So they've been, have been ensuring us allegedly that Brittany will be able to escape her shared cell, shared cell, and she's being held in a detention cell within a penal colony. So, um, they stated that there's also a small exercise yard, but the workout area isn't the only benefit of the penal colony. So each day inside will count as two days towards her sentence. And that's really unclear the way that they structured that sentence, right? They're, they're talking about all these sports and extracurricular activities. And then they said each day, they were talking about the cell and then sports, and then they said each day inside will count as two days towards her sentence. If each day counted as two days, wouldn't her sentence be cut in half or something? Like, that's not clear to me. However, I did a lot of research before I came here and they didn't make that clear. But, you know, Russia laws are pretty different. So who knows? Hopefully we'll get more information about this maybe over the weekend. But I know you lying, talking about, oh, she might be able to coach out I, I don't know when it come to doing something you love like okay uh, I just can't imagine them tasking her with forcing you know what I mean teaching other people how to play basketball that is her dream job but she's now over there a prisoner 
and you all could, you know, I, I guess it would be easier than being a cook or a seamstress, but I don't know. I would still feel some type of way. I would feel like they were exploiting my skill. And probably because I would be disgruntled because I'd be a prisoner of their area. You know what I mean? Do I love creating content? Yes. But if I was like incarcerated and forced to, I don't know, something, something, something just doesn't feel right about that. Something doesn't feel right about that. I don't know. 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 But I don't know. What do you think about it? Any of y'all thoughts are welcome down below because I, I I feel like it's a slap in the face. That's just me. Um, I typically have more in-depth thoughts and opinions about things. But for this one, I don't because it's, it's really strange to me. So what are your final thoughts and opinions on this Brittany Griner situation as it pertains to her potentially working in the prison over there in Russia and working by teaching other women how to play basketball? Does it make sense to you? Is it great? Is it not great? Any and all thoughts? I want to know what y'all are thinking down below, okay? Now, let's get into some viral topics or viral videos, should I say. Y'all know we cover real news, black news, and social media over here on the Black News Bus. <sighs> Sesame, Sesame Street, or aka Sesame Place, is back at it again with the bullshit PR scandals. They are back at it again. Shout out to all 335 of us here in the chat. Appreciate you for showing up, showing love, and hitting that thumbs up button. Let's talk about Sesame Goddamn Street, Sesame Goddamn Place. Another update? Like, why, why is it so much? <laughs> Another update again? Again? Again. Okay, so let's get into this. Now, after a $25 million lawsuit, the goddamn Sesame Place is banning the bilingual Muppet from Mexico, okay? They are getting rid of, rid of Rosita. They're getting rid of a cost two more character that's filled by a human as if that's going to change anything. Can somebody help me make it make sense? If they don't get ready to hire some real people to help them out in this time of need for them, uh, multiple buildings with the costume characters face on them have reportedly remained closed since the incident in July with staff claiming that Rosita has been canceled. Now, Rosita Coquina's restaurant has reportedly been closed for weeks despite the busy summer period. Rosita was one of the only characters who was not included in the daily parade with staff members adding that the performers were now being told to remain on the floats after the allegations. Other images of Rosita have been hidden by the park with her and Big Bird both being covered with the large purple structure close to a dining hall in a theme park. Now stores selling merchandise of Sesame Street also appeared to have either removed items featuring the character or having less out on display. An empty basket in one of the stores appeared to be where Rosita figures had been, but were now empty. Mugs and other items also didn't feature the character, but it's not clear if she was just not part of the main 2022 branding for the incident. T-shirts plus toys and various other items were also all on display for the other characters of Sesame Street, but none of the stores had a Rosita section. Look, la 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 la. <laughs> What's the removal of the, what? What is the removal of the costume or the character gonna do? Like, what's 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 that going to do? Why not reveal the person who was inside of said costume? Don't remove the costume. Remove the racist employees and the racist antics. That's what needs to be removed is the racism. <laughs> you know, at this point, they need real professional crisis management and diversity professionals because this is a mess. They have no clue how to handle this situation and they're literally winging it. They're like, let's make Rosita 
disappear, that's going to make the problem disappear. And no, because behind that character Rosita that day from those videos was an employee who was out of order. And so those actions from that employee and any others who may feel tempted to act the same way, those things are the issues. But, you know, I want to know y'all opinion on what um, I want to know your opinion. I want to know your opinion on this situation. I'm really tired of the Sesame Place updates, especially when they're kind of just a slap in the face. I had just gave an update the other day on Sesame Place and it's still it just didn't meet the mark. It didn't meet the mark. Okay. So I want to know what you all think. It's called let us ignore this, please. Okay. Exactly. It wasn't just Rosita. It wasn't. It, 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 there were more. And I don't know all of the Sesame Street character names, but I saw like the big purple one. It was more than Rosita. Okay. It it truly was. Um, so yeah, they, they really need to chill out and get some diversity training. Right. But now I want to get into the next situation and I want to know y'all opinion on what this content creator experienced and exposed since we're in the viral topics and viral videos. Jen, you fit to quit since you're here. I did see the preview of your email, but I need to sit down and read it. I forget what I was doing at the time when you had sent that email, but I'm going to read it this weekend. So thank you for sending that. I do appreciate it. Right. Let me see. So let's get into this video here from a content creator. And I really want to know what you think. I really do. I want to know what you think. Harsh reality that black content creators face. So she's talking about, she said, I want to let y'all know about the harsh realities that black content creators face. It's the harsh reality that black content creators face. I recently lost out on a five figure brand deal for posting this picture. Says my, this nigga, my nigga took these, right? Nowhere but. in the contract were there any stipulations given around what kind of content I could post, except for the branded content, which would be approved by the company. As for my personal content, nothing was said. After posting that picture and posting that caption, I received a phone call from my agent saying that the company thought it was inappropriate. And I just want to take a second to unpack that. When I read that caption, I read a playful articulation of the love I have for my man. It's been generally agreed upon by the Black community for decades that the N-word isn't derogatory. It's a term of endearment. And that brings us to the photo. Yet again, when I look at this picture, I see playfulness. I see a Black girl living her best life, having fun. There's nothing inappropriate about it to me, especially not in the world we live in today. For centuries, Black women's bodies have been scrutinized, they've been picked apart, they've been deemed unworthy, they've been deemed inappropriate, and this is yet again an extension of that rhetoric. It's the hypersexualization of the Black female body which has led to this very conversation. The only way someone else could deem this as inappropriate is if they projected their sexual desires onto me or if they projected their underlying judgments onto me, which is what we call prejudice. Now, typically I would brush that off and say, that's a you problem, but it becomes a me problem because it threatens my livelihood, just the same way these systems of oppression have threatened the livelihood of black women for centuries. Furthermore, you want access to my audience, which is mostly black women, without actually having a full appreciation for black culture. Why is it that what's considered appropriate or professional is always adjacent to whiteness? You want the activist part of me that's articulate and intelligent, but that's just one side of my black girl magic. Because the other side of me knows how to turn up and throw this ass. And that's what I'm going to do. We don't have to separate who we are in order to please these companies. We don't have to erase or hide any aspect of our personality in order to get these bags. If you can't handle me at my back that ass up, you don't deserve me at my I have a dream. I'd like to take a minute to discuss the harsh reality that black content creators face. I recently lost out on a five figure brand deal for posting this picture with this caption. Nowhere in the contract were there any stipulations given around what kind of content I could post except for the branded content, which would be approved by the company. As for my personal content, nothing was said. After posting that picture and posting that caption, I received a phone call from my agent saying that the company thought it was inappropriate. 
And I just want to take a second to unpack that. When I read that caption, I read a playful articulation of the love I have for my man. It's been generally agreed upon by the Black community for decades that the N-word isn't derogatory. It's a term of endearment. And that brings us to the photo. Yet again, when I look at this picture, I see playfulness. I see a Black girl living her best life, having fun. There's nothing inappropriate about it to me, especially not in the world we live in today. For centuries, Black women's bodies have been scrutinized, they've been picked apart, they've been deemed unworthy, they've been deemed inappropriate, and this is yet again an extension of that rhetoric. It's the hypersexualization of the Black female body which has led to this very conversation. The only way someone else could deem this as inappropriate is if they projected their sexual desires onto me, or if they projected their underlying judgments onto me, which is what we call prejudice. Now, typically I would brush that off and say, that's a you problem, but it becomes a me problem because it threatens my livelihood, just the same way these systems of oppression have threatened the livelihood of black women for centuries. Furthermore, you want access to my audience, which is mostly black women, without actually having a full appreciation for black culture. Why is it that what's considered appropriate or professional is always adjacent to whiteness? You want the activist part of me that's articulate and intelligent, but that's just one side of my black girl magic because the other side of me knows how to turn up and throw this ass. And that's what I'm gonna do. We don't have to separate who we are in order to please these companies. We don't have to erase or hide any aspect of our personality in order to get these bags. If you can't handle me at my back that ass up, you don't deserve me at my I have a dream. Girl, <clears throat> you know, this is the thing for me. This is the thing that got it for me. She said, if you can't handle me at my back that ass up, you see it say my nigga took these. She said, if you can't handle me at my back that ass up, you don't deserve me at my I have a dream, child. That's the part that got me. <laughs> That's the part. I was, I was trying to understand. I was trying to stay with it. I ain't gonna lie. Like, when I first came across it, I was like, okay, black woman expressing an issue, a brand, did her wrong. Let me try and follow, you know, what she's saying, you know. And then when she got to the last line, I said, oh, sh you know, at the end of the day, this doesn't sound like it was a black brand it doesn't sound like it was a black company um she mentioned in the video that they want access to her black audience which something 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 and if she's making this a race issue then i feel like she would have very openly and clearly articulated that this was a black business who did her wrong like damn black business the black woman it doesn't seem like it was I'm not upset that a black com uh, that a white company or not black company or business didn't want to associate with that word cuz you know in one way or another it could come back on them there's some black people that don't like that word I've been on people's channels where before before we went live and collaborated literally shout out to Kira Dangerous she's one of those and I've and, and she's been over here on my channel collabed over here and I've collabed over there on her channel and before we got started on her channel she said listen one thing I don't do is I, I don't like the word nigga I don't like the n-word I just don't think it's cool for our people I couldn't do anything but respect that because it's her platform and me being on her platform and being an extension of her brand at that time on her channel and that's what it is so I'm not I, it, it's not a surprise that some people just don't like that word and they definitely don't want to uh affiliated with their business or their brand um you know brands get to choose who they want to work with just as creators get to choose what brands they want to work with you know some brands do try to put you in a box it's up to you whether you want to do that hopscotch dance or take that sacrifice and um or not you know some brands certain words are off limits for them certain subject matters are off limits for them and certain behaviors are off limits for them some brands don't want to associate with certain words topics or behaviors that's just the fact <laughs> you know certain behavior words um or subjects it it, it could be off putting and and, and not in line for the brand you know for example there's several things that i'm down with um you know as a person but it doesn't mean that i want to associate the things that i'm down with in my purse all of them right like i'm a very real down-to-earth person but I, I do have a cutoff limit with some of the things that i fuck with in my real life that i'm not gonna mesh with excuse me my brand 
I'm just not. And that, that's how business is. Business does require boundaries. Your business may be you. It may be a reflection of you, but it has to be, it, it, it typically is a hyper version of you. You could be down with some really grimy, muddy, gruddy, duddy, whatever. It doesn't mean that you want your business to reflect that and what you do behind closed doors. So there's a line that people draw between their person and their business. And I might be willing as a person to accept certain things or viewpoints. I have conversations with people behind closed doors and that, that I'm willing to have and sit there and listen to and maybe even laugh at. That doesn't mean that I want to come onto my brand and affect my brand with those things. And so, you know, people have the right to be as picky as they can want to be when it comes to their brand. You know, it's not like they said, don't wear your natural hair in this video. Don't talk about natural hair in this video. Perm your hair for this video. It's not like it was like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, sometimes high figure deals, right? She's talking about a five figure deal. Um, which, you know, for an influencer ain't bad, right? It wasn't a four figure deal. She said a five figure deal, right? That's a little something, something to be doing some influence, you know, for some influencer stuff. Um, you know, high figure deals, they do sometimes come with decorum stipulations. They do. They do. Think about the people who you know who have who have who have made it a bit bigger, who you've watched grown from a really indie grassroots state to wherever they are now. You know, it the, sometimes the exception is being a comedian, even if it's an Instagram comedian. Um, but it comes with a certain type of decorum. If we're gonna talk about YouTube specifically, people who grow the bigger and bigger they get, like you know, sometimes depending on the brand, they don't want to, and some of the brands require for you to send the video in so that if you send the video in before you publish it, they're like, yeah, we don't like this topic. We don't want abortion in this video or we don't, and you either got to change it, work with them or not. Like you have the liberty to work with whatever business or brand you want to work with. And the brand has the same liberty to work with whatever. Um, I get it. She feels like she was done wrong by this business and this brand, but Find another one. You know what I mean? Everybody's not down with the N-word. I know several. If 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 my girl Kara Dangerous had a business or a brand and she was looking for Instagram influencers and you used the word nigga, my girl Kara is a black woman. She's not down with that word. She would probably revoke her association with you too. And you know what I mean? Like all of the stuff that you're not with as a business or a company, you can't anticipate it, right? Like remember I did the video not too long ago of Murad Morali and he's doing all this feet stuff and racial play uh disgusting stuff who wants to put in their contract no race play can't be playing with your feet and calling people niggas and calling people c h i n k s s like people can't put everything imaginable in their contracts when it comes to what they're not willing to accept or deal with as a business. So, you know, sometimes your behavior, not like she did anything wrong. She just did something that didn't align with that business. And that's how I feel. I don't feel like she did anything wrong. I don't, you know, and, and for me personally, I don't ever want association with an, with a brand that's going to strip me of my blackness um, of my black ass expression or my black ass way of communicating. I don't want to work with a company that, 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 that doesn't understand my way of expression. And, and a lot of times it takes for you to really search around and find the brands and the businesses that really understand who you are and how you communicate and emote as a content creator that takes work, that takes diligence you know, but to put Martin Luther King and back that ass up in the same sentence and to say, if you can't accept me at my back that ass up, then you don't deserve me at my Martin Luther King is like, girl, what? Like, no. <laughs> like, no. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. For me. You know what I'm saying? Like, did Marad's sponsor say, no, don't be slapping people with your foot and, you know, like, or calling them slur, you know what I mean? No, 
Um, so I do wish this young lady the best of luck. Is this an issue of color or not with her using the N word in a caption? So close, because this is the thing, it'd be different if she if, if if that was a picture or a post from three weeks ago and three weeks after the deal, but it was so close to the post that she was supposed to serve up to the brand, the proximity was just it, it was a little bit too close for the company to feel like, yeah, you know what I mean? If it was three weeks ago, or depending on how often she posts, if it was 15, 18 posts ago, depending on that she posts once a day, that she not, it would have been different. But it was it was in the close proximity. And, and, and some brands, you know, they, different brands have different, you know, stipulations. And again, I, I could see if it was, I don't like that natural hair. Oh, I don't like you talking about natural hair. Maybe you should straighten that natural hair. It, it wasn't like that. It was you using the word nigga, which everybody, even some black folk, can't get with. And of course, some white folk can't get with that. And they definitely don't want it associated with their business because it'll look like they're complacent with the utilization of that word. Um, so that's it. That's that's the end of my thought uh, on the situation. Now, what I do want to talk about is one of the descendants of Rachel Dolezal. Let's get into let's let's get into the descendant of Rachel Dolezal. Okay, we talking about wanting to do the culture. We talking about wanting to do wanting to culturally appropriate. Look at the cost. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Old girl was fighting for her life, okay? I mean, like, legitimately. She was really fighting for... This is your granddaddy. This is your granddaddy. She was fighting for her life. Hey, listen, you want these braids? You want to be like us? Be like us. Baby, we deal with the pain. Was this her first time? It was her first time, baby. She was a virgin. Old girl broke her in, okay? It looked rough. I saw, excuse me, I saw some people in the comments that said, oh, she's being intentionally rough. I didn't feel like she was being intentionally rough. I feel like this woman understood that this girl has really soft hair. And if she didn't put it as tight as possible, it's going to be a mess tomorrow. Uh, she wanted it. She got it. But yeah, uh, honestly, on a real note, I really don't think that. <laughs> I really don't think she was being um, intentional. I think she was trying to help this girl's hairstyle last a little bit since, you know, she claimed she really wanted it. I'm trying to crack my knee. I cracked it. Okay. And yeah, old girl got it. 
Oh girl got it. This is um she her you know, her hair is obviously different than ours as black people, regardless of whether you 4C, B C, whatever the case is. This girl's hair is different. Wait a minute. Do I smell the air fryer? Uh uh. Something's being cooked in the air fryer downstairs. Something's being cooked. Yeah, something's being cooked. Yup. Yup. What's going on downstairs? What's what's going on downstairs? I smell it. Mm, I'm trying to understand what it is. Is it shrimp? Is it chicken? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I smell it. What's going on? Somebody said deaf intentional. Is it? Child. Is that? You know, no, because honestly, think about it. Think about it. Think about non-black people. Think about even even a little white girl like this. Be be keeping a buck. Look, we're gonna talk about keeping your hair intact. Do you think somebody like her understands how to sleep pretty? Or sleep with your head and want you you know when you got your hair done done. And you try to sleep less wild. They don't understand that. They don't understand that. That You know what I mean? Like coming home and trying to sleep pretty. Whether it be the day before prom. The day you got braids. You know, even if you're wearing a scarf. If you sleep too wild. The scarf won't come off and your hair going to be a mess. So you got to sleep pretty regardless. Scarf or no scarf. People like her. Don't understand that because they wake up every day and just tap th to throw some water or mousse in there and they're in they're done. So I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite sure what this little girl fighting for her life. God bless her. She she wanted a little she wanted a little flavor she wanted a little season all she wanted she wanted a little bit more than the sprinkle of salt they put on there she wants some season all some old bay some 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 lemon pepper some cayenne some Montreal steak seasoning oh she got it she 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 wanted more than that unseasoned hairstyle she got it she realized the pain you want to be one of us feel the pain and you still never gonna be one of us but still. Feel the pain. <laughs> Feel the pain. Yeah, you you know, as black folk don't stop playing. We sleep, we sleep a little bit more prettier when we get our hair done. <laughs> it do look painful. Um, but yeah, you know, honestly, look, I ain't trying, I ain't trying to be funny. And I'm not trying to be um xenophobic or anything like that but look i'm too tender headed to ever let an african do my hair you go to them african braiding shops oh baby they they rough i can't do it and they're rougher than the regular people and i go to you know what i mean i've always went to regular people um so yeah she <laughs> she learned you just because you want two cornrows you know what i mean um I don't know who you go to. You're going to be in pain. I mean, she's going to be in pain regardless. But just realize where the pain is going to be a little bit worse. Um, but she going through it. Look, I, I I went through it. Look, my mother ain't African. But when she was doing my hair coming up, I went through it too. So, you know, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. <laughs> he said migraine on the thousand. She in pain tonight. Did she make it home? Did she take it out? We don't know. Find out on the next episode of... Uh, I wanna be black. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, Leo. That's what I'm saying. What, what's going on? Okay, and what's that? Anything else? All right. Good, 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 good. I'm glad you're done saying what you got to say. Well, that's that neighborhood. She's fighting for her life. And, you know, I wish her the best. She wanted something that she really couldn't handle. And we're out of here. 
We're out of here. We're done. Uh, maybe she learned. Maybe she. Maybe she'll do them herself. We know if she does them herself, they won't look half as good. But African, African, ah, stop. African shops. Um, you got to take payments before you go. Okay. <laughs> they said, did she make it home? Somebody said, I went to few. I said, I went to an African when I was eight. Ever since I was tender headed, my hair is down to my ass. I refuse to let anyone do it. I don't want to cry. Get my hair. Hello. My mother, child, get, get my hair done was always just the worst thing. Like, it's it's the worst. Ooh, the food. I don't know what's in the air fryer, but something's there. So let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Something's, something's in the air fryer. Something in the air fryer. And I'm hungry. I ain't ate nothing today. Nothing. <laughs> but let me get into just, just, just a few points, right? Touching back on... The first topic that we discussed, which was Chadwick Bozeman. Like I said, I hope his family speaks out about the documentary, whether they stand with it or not. I think that a lot of us will be ready to make a lot of noise if the family's not in line with it. So I hope we are able to hear something about that later on. Again, it's supposed to be premiering on reels or something like that. Mm. I'm, I'm anxious to see if the family approves or not. Um, I also still want to know who the father of Joycelyn's, Jocelyn Joycelyn's um, alleged baby is, okay? She claims she's pregnant. Is she really pregnant or not? We don't know, child. But she claimed R. Kelly is the father, and she swears um, it's him. And therefore, like I said, I, I, I want her to seek several mental evaluations because what kind of math is that? Like what what kind of math is that? Like it makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Oh now you want to act like you got a little bit of sense. Now you got some sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's that. Let's get into today's Beyonce bango number. Okay. If y'all know we sending out the Beyonce boxes to those who win okay and hopefully we have three winners if not i'll just keep the remainder boxes and we'll come up with another another giveaway <laughs> but it is time for the beyonce giveaway and here's the number i'll leave it on the screen for a little while so y'all can catch it this is today's Beyonce bingo number, and it's for the three Beyonce boxes that I'm giving away. It is specifically for channel members. If you're a channel member, you are able to enter this giveaway, collect the boxes. The rules are backstage on the members only community tab. And may the best men and women win. We're giving away three boxes. If there just so happens to be more than three people who get the correct correspondence, then it will be based on who joined the membership earlier, who joined the membership first. So if you get it right and you've only been a member for two days, but there are people who have gotten it right who have been a member for longer than you, the seniority will win. And that's how the giveaways when you are a member of the channel work, okay? Somebody said, what's in the box? Look, it's a Beyonce box. We don't know. <laughs> I haven't opened the box. I saw a description, but I still just kind of want to be surprised. I mean, you can go to BeyonceShop.com and maybe like see if the description is still there. Um, I got all four because I ordered four boxes. One is for me, obviously. The other three are for me to share with you all. And I haven't opened my box yet because I, I at least want to wait until I ship out the winning boxes until I open mine. Like I, I just don't want to open mine first. I feel like it's only right for me to execute the giveaway first before I open my own box. So, um, but you know, if Beyonce is sending out boxes, baby, it is a keepsake. It is something that you want. It costs a little coin, but it's worth it. My channel members, y'all, like y'all really, I appreciate y'all. Like, y'all are the dopest, like the dopest. So, I'm anxious. We'll um, convene backstage via community tab post or video and discuss how 
you will be submitting your numbers. If you'll submit them on the community tab by themselves or if you will submit them via Google form. So we will be discussing that backstage and shout out to all the channel members who are already back there and familiar with how it is. <laughs> Not just give me a box because I'm dope. <laughs> Rashida girl. Bye. Bye. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of black history so we can wrap it up because what time is it? Three o'clock in the morning, baby. I'm trying <laughs> I'm trying to get to that air fry. Ain't you, Leo? <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get into our black history moment. All I wanna say is that they don't really care about us. Now let's spend a little bit of time with our history moment. They got me in the system. Why they gotta do me like that? I know I can be what I wanna be. Be what I wanna be. We got love for y'all, which I don't know. All right, let's get into our Black History moment. Not everybody clicking away when it comes time to Black History. That's how I know y'all ain't shit. Some of y'all, right? About like, about like 15, 20 people that clicked away because they don't care about Black History. But guess what? Black History is important. We don't know where we're going unless we know where we came from. And we're stuck in this cycle of racism either getting worse, intensifying, <laughs> repeating itself, we thought we were escaping a little something, something because we were, you know, farther along in time. And really the racism is showing up in some of the same fashion in a modernized sense, right? The only difference is the technology. And sometimes the technology can intensify and make the racism a little bit worse. But it's cool if people don't get it. And that's that, that's just what it is. But I'm not going to stop talking about Black history just because a heap of people kind of don't want to hear about it right um so but let, let's get into it let's get into a little bit of black history nonetheless and y'all know black history is so much more than one day okay black history is so much more than a month so i want to talk about on this day in black history and it really hones in, in on the sacrifices that our ancestors used to make to ensure we had rights and access to resources to survive and eventually to live a bit more comfortably. So if it wasn't for the sacrifices that we that that they made, we wouldn't be able to be here as comfortable as we are. Should things be better? Should racism be gone? Yes. But if it wasn't for the way that they put their foot down, sometimes and some people feel like they were too lenient and I get that. But if it wasn't for the way that they put their foot down, we honestly wouldn't have as much as we have. So I want to talk about the public education system and how some of us brown folk really fought for that. And the 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 difference is it it seems to be a bit of an oxymoron, right? Because fighting for equality and calling out how there are only white people or non-black people in a certain space means that you 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 need to occupy that space in order to be equal, feel equal, in order for them to really be diversified. But in this day and age, we kind of feel like, well, I'm going to go where I'm appreciated, not where I'm tolerated. So I don't even want to be there if you don't want me there. But if all of our ancestors and the people who came before us really thought that way, we wouldn't have half as much as what we have now. So it it just goes to show you, and I think studying some of the problem resolution 
that transpired back in the day in black and white time and and and, and, and slavery time and apartheid and and Jim Crow studying those solutions and resolutions, what worked, what didn't work, what was unsuccessful, what was successful, studying those things so that we can duplicate them in a different way, I think it can really help us grow. I think the keys to the future are based on study in the past. But don't get me to preaching. Let's just go ahead and get into today's Black history and really talk about it, okay? You'll see some children on the screen. And I'm going to just, uh, you know, just kind of tell a story based on what I found based off of today on this day in Black history, August 12th, 1965. So May, Bertha and Matthew Carter were the first Black parents to enroll their children in the all white schools of Sunflower County, Mississippi. They faced great risks to exercise their legal rights sharecroppers on a cotton plantation. The owner threw the Carter family off of the land and their home was riddled with bullets in the middle of the night. So think about this. Your employer who feels like your race, right, is the scum of the earth and they shoot your house up in the middle of the night. You're sending your kids to all white schools. Like these are some, like you're talking about life or death situations. These are the times we're talking about. But nonetheless, again, these parents enrolled their children in all white schools. They were sharecroppers on a plantation. And the owner threw that family off of their land. And their home was then shot up in the middle of the night. So the Carters were a sharecropping family on a cotton plantation outside of Drew when Mississippi, under threat of losing federal funds, came up with a freedom of choice plan to circumvent federal law. So families like the Carters could sign papers to send their children to all white schools, but both blacks and whites knew what would happen to families who made that choice. And the thing about it is this was 19, what was the year this again? 1965. This was 1965 and Brown versus Board of Education was 1954. So this was a long time after, but even though they had ruled segregation of schools and educational facilities unconstitutional in 1954 in 1965 people still felt uncomfortable and knew that it could lead to death and all other types of stuff if you were to try to enforce that this is why the law kind of means nothing to us nowadays because there were all types of stuff that were legal when it comes to us as black folk back in the day Despite the Board of Education in 1954 and 1965, lots, all of the Black parents and families felt like we cannot send our children to public schools despite the fact that the law has been passed, that they are not allowed to segregate these schools and these institutions. So families like the Carters could sign papers to send their children to all white schools, but both Black and whites knew what would happen to families who made that choice. Quote, if they don't get you in the wash, they'll get you in the rinse. End quote. May Bertha Carter told a visiting minister from Ohio who supported her family. Now the Carters were threatened with eviction and found credit in local stores, cut off their home, shattered by gunshots in the dark, forcing them to sleep on the floor in fear. So this is a black family that literally had to sleep on the floor because they were afraid their homes were being shot into night by night as they sent their children to school because the law stated that it's unconstitutional and illegal to segregate schools. Send your black kids to the white schools. Their homes were getting shot up every night, okay? So spitballs and insults were continuously hurled at the children as they rolled the school bus to a facility where life was honestly no easier. One of the children of May Bertha stated, I hated history class. It's when we covered the Civil War and the teachers said the N-word. They said Negro or nigger. 
And they also allowed other students to say it. And they allowed other students to say it like I wasn't even there. You know what I mean? Like, that is crazy. I want to let you listen to a little something, something from the, you know, it, it, it's an excerpt from Standing on My Sister's Shoulders. Standing up for education rights were May Bertha Carter and her children. I have never anywhere in my life seen anybody as courageous as the local people. I want to say that about the May Bertha Carters of the world uh, because they were the ones who were there without resources when somebody could come in the night and get them. In rural Sunflower County, May Bertha Carter's family was the first to attempt desegregation. This sharecropper and mother of 13 didn't know she was sending her seven school-age kids into battle. I was born 74 years ago. My mother and my father, they were sharecroppers. And my grandparents were sharecroppers. As far as I can go back, my family was sharecroppers, uneducated. And when I had my children, I was going to see that they never be sharecroppers all their lives. I will try to give our children the best education that we could get for them. The U.S. Civil Rights Act of 1964 called for the desegregation of all public schools receiving federal funds. To comply with the new mandates, Southern states, including Mississippi, adopted what was called freedom of choice. 65 or 66 is when the uh, Freedom of Choice papers came out for us to choose which school we wanted to go to. And we were just so excited. We knew this, this is really going to be excited because we had been seeing their buses and we had been comparing their buses to our buses. And we were saying, we're going to get to ride on a brand new shiny bus and we're going to be at a night nice school. So the daddy and, and everybody agreed that we was going to go to this freedom, or take this freedom of choice and go to the white school. The new policy was intentionally deceptive. So we signed those papers. And we got up the next morning, got in this old pickup truck we had, and came on out here to Drew. And we went in and we laid these phones on the table. Trussell looked at them, and the man began to look red. And he never said a word. And early the next morning, we found out why he was turning red. They didn't really mean it. That was just a joke. They thought they knew black people. You know, white folks in Mississippi, they think they know black people. And so they knew that we were depending on them. And they knew that black people wasn't going to make that choice. And so here come the overseer out 8 o'clock in the morning. And he began to tell my husband he was shocked. He heard that we had gone out to his white school and had enrolled our children in there. And he wanted to go out there with my husband and have our children withdraw out of the school. But I said, look, you go out there and you tell that man that I bless my children. I bear the pain for them. He couldn't tell me what school to send my children to. And I'd be a fool trying to tell him what school to send his children to. At three o'clock in the morning, we heard the shots. And the shots were going just like popcorn popping. Pop, 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 pop. And my husband said, oh, they shooting out there. I jumped out the bed and I ran to the bed while my children were sleeping. And I shook them. They were still asleep. We were determined that they would not make us go out and withdraw our children out of the school. The morning they went into school, we looked out and we saw this pretty bright school bus coming. That first day we found out that we were gonna be the only ones there. I was the only one in my class. Uh, Pearl was the only one in her class. And it was we were it was seven of us. And we were just seven black kids in an all-white school. 
it was shocking to go to a classroom and then sit down and then everybody pushed their desk to the side and say, I don't want to sit beside you. Uh, you're not going to sit there, are you? We didn't think they were going to be hostile the way they were. So that was a surprise. Every time I get up to do something, I find myself back on the bed praying until my children came home. I went out on the porch when I saw the bus coming and I count my children one by one as they got off the school bus. And that's when the reality really began to set in that we're not wanted here, you're not supposed to be here. And we were told that over and over again. And then they began to tell me about all the name nigger calling, all the spitballs, all the yelling and everything. Mama, can you believe this? This is the way they treated us. And we were surprised that, that, that it was like that because we actually thought that we would have some friends. It was hard. And in fact, my children said they didn't eat, eat, tell me everything. Mama would talk to us every night and say, well, you have a right to be there. And when they talk about you, just remember you're just as good as anybody else. I was being told, you don't know anything, you're dumb, you're stupid, you never learn anything. And it made me determine to prove them wrong. My children, they all graduated from Drew High School and seven of them attended and graduated from the University of Mississippi. And that, I think that was great. <clears throat> these were different times these were different types of sacrifices we talk about cultural shifts in the way the landscape changes for us as black people in a, a specific sort of environment or reference and when you know, imagine going to somewhere where you truly feel, it's not even that you feel, you know, like it is openly expressed that you are hated, that you are unwanted and your parents tell you, but you have a right to be there and you continue to show up. That we still experience that as people to this day. You might go and work at a company. You might be watching this video right now when you work at a company that is predominantly non-black, white, whatever, whatever, right? Because everything that ain't black ain't necessarily white. It could it, it, Armenian or like whatever. Um, and, you know, to keep showing up with with the, the, the fact and the known notion that I have a right to be here. You know, that takes a certain amount of strength and resiliency and bandwidth where is though some people will be like, listen, you don't want me here, I'm gone. And when we get into like, let's just say if, if you were here, like if you really watch all my stuff, <laughs> if you really watch all my stuff, then I did a sticky note two days ago where we spoke about the push initiative with Reverend Jesse Jackson back in 1981, to he was going they the activists were going after the beverage companies in which the beverage companies weren't being inclusive to black people on any front employment contractor situation distributorships um not black banks they weren't working with black banks and so they decided to force them to fuck with black banks hey you ain't got no black people working here you need to do it. And, and that pressing actually worked. They went after Budweiser. They went after Coca-Cola. They, you know, and, and, and at that, they literally made Coca-Cola cave. And Coca-Cola ended up putting $30 million into black businesses. They ended up starting to work with black banks. Because when black folks started boycotting Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola really felt that effect. Black folk had taken the data and realized we put a lot of our money into these beverages, these extra sugary sweet beverages, which really, when we think about how much sugar is in Coca-Cola, how much sugar and how many carbs are in Coca-Cola, 
But we realize our power despite the ridiculous nutritional effect. Terrible for our bodies. That's why a lot of us got the sugar. You know, but nonetheless, it was a matter of them being like, you don't want me here, but I'm going to be here. And I have a right to be here. So I'm going to be here. And that was our ancestors back in the day. And that's what they did in order for us to have the rights that we have. Like, imagine working for the, us working for the government nowadays. Like, back in the day, you think a lot of black folk worked for the government back in the 1970s, 1980s? Like, no, they did not, you know? And it's easy to say, well, I don't want to be there if they don't want me there. I ain't going to lie. Like, we, we had that choice. I remember when I made the conscious decision to get locks. It was around about two. 2016 I think it was 2016 and I was hearing that some places matter of fact I had even went and applied to one place I had long twists at the time and they were like yeah you're hired as soon as you take them 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 things out your head that's basically what they said they didn't know what to call them they didn't know whether to call them long twists kinky twists twisties, dreads, locks, plaits. They didn't know. They were like, you're hired as soon as you take them things out of your head. Silly me, I did it, right? But um, I didn't bang with that place of employment anyway. And then when I decided that I wanted to get locks, I realized that there were cases popping up where, 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 where people with locks were getting turned down their jobs because it was like, you're hired. You can start as soon as you cut them locks out or comb them locks out and you're good to go. And I decided, I said, you know what? And this is before the Crown Act really started popping off. The Crown Act still isn't in all 50 states, but um, I decided to get it because I'm like, yo, if you, if you don't appreciate or don't want me working there based on my hair, and, and I knew I needed my hair in locks because that's just what I, I was in this point in my journey where I knew I needed my hair locked. It was the best decision for me, my hair, my spirituality. And I knew that there were certain workplaces. Matter of fact, that was a time when there were a lot of workplaces that were being put on blast for discriminating against people with locks. I decided to get the locks literally in the height of the lock discrimination phase. I said, well, I'm going to get them. Fuck it. (laughs) Because if you don't like me because of my hair, good. Don't hire me. But this is how I'm going to wear my hair. And I don't want to go anywhere where I need to tiptoe around anybody. If I, if I show up and you say, I don't like your locks or you can't, cool. I don't want to work here. I'm not even about to fight you and say, but I deserve, but my rights, but this, like, no, the, I, that wasn't where I was with my hair. I don't want to fight with an employer about wearing my hair the way that I want my hair to be. You know what I mean? Like I posted a picture on my community tab today of me and Leo before I got my locked hair. I think it was 2014, 15 or something. I posted that picture of me and Leo. I'm literally sitting on the toilet and here he go walking up on my shoulders. And I snapped a picture, you know what I mean? You know, but... Nonetheless, like hair is, it, it's a really important aspect of our lives. It really isn't. But even outside of hair, when you decide what you will and what you will not deal with, it's a big deal. You know what I mean? So the difference in our generations as, I don't know, I'm a millennial. Um, you talk about like baby boomers and Gen Z and so on and so forth. Like it's a big deal. And we all make different types of of sacrifices. And I I wish we could come together a bit better with regards to the sacrifices that we make as a people, you know, um, I, I, I really feel like they shouldn't have had to have fight this way for fair and equal education because in 1954 Brown versus education declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional it was unconstitutional in 1954 it was but this was 1965 when this stuff right here was happening 
like at this point, I'm just thinking about hair stuff. I'm thinking about like the hair container my mother had to use. I'm thinking about pink oil moisturizer. I'm thinking about the baldies, the barrettes, the brushes, the goodie, like all of that stuff. But that's just me thinking about hair and really trying to find an escape, which within a painful within a painful memory of what black history as it relates to black hair is. So to bring it back to the actual black history, right? Cause I can relate to it in a, in a million different ways. Um, this was 1965. This was 1965, despite the fact that in 1954, Brown versus education was deemed unconstitutional. <clears throat> um, imagine sending your school, sending your students, sending your 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 children to school when they feel like they're hated, when they want to run away. And I've read stories connected to the the Carters and the story I'm talking about right now where they ran away, where they were being mistreated for them to endure that. And for us to have the liberties that we have now, mind you, it may have gotten a bit worse, not worse, but you know, we've got technology and all that stuff. It's, it, you know, it really makes me speechless because I couldn't imagine signing up in 1965 to go to a segregated school <laughs> and to deal with what that rhetoric would be like from those people during that time frame and in general. I really can't imagine that. Sending your kids to school is is is, is it, it, it's a real sacrifice. What are you gonna do? Not send them to school? <laughs> you know, like did the parents have all of the education that was necessary to assist them to survive? Uh, you know, the things with one of these children here is one of them was a real mathematician. Not to say that the other ones weren't smart, but um, you know, there's a difference between us and them. But that's why I say studying what has happened in the past. Um, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. And I feel like when you study the keys to the past and the successful stories of the past as people of color and as Black people, I think that those are some of the keys to our future. So, um, yeah, them people force their kids to go to school in racist environments and it's like you know whoa one of the one of the children had actually ran away it was like i don't i don't like this but the next day they went back because they realized how good they were at math um but you know look black history is it's 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 what is black history black history is blank I, I can't even fill in the blank. What is black history? Black history is blank. I can't even fill it in. But nonetheless, like I was saying earlier today, nowadays we preach and teach, go where you're appreciated, not where you're tolerated. But in order to make long-term lasting change, you know, sometimes you have to be radical. You have to think differently and um strategies and solutions are not one size fits all <laughs> like they're not there's no such thing as a as a one size fits all sort of a solution so especially especially <laughs> let's put an asterisk here when we're talking about our freedom when we're talking about our right to learn, 
Because <laughs> not to mention, you remember it was illegal for black folk to learn how to learn. To learn how to learn. For black folk to learn how to read or write, it was a crime. It was illegal. <laughs> so, and, and the whole purpose of black folks, let's not teach them how to read or write. Because if they learn how to read or write, they'll understand that slavery isn't something that they, they shouldn't be slave. <laughs> Plus a whole bunch of other things. We talk about finances and whatever else. But like I said, strategies and solutions are not one size fits all. Not when our freedom, not when our right to learn and survive are on the line. Implement and change that we want to outlast us. Cause that's that's what it's really about. It's about our grandchildren. <laughs> like, fuck us. Like all the change that we are advocating for, us loud, opinionated. Shout out to Angela Stanton King. Shout out to Michi X. Shout out to the people who really are trying to get things done for the people that are gonna come after us. Because the change that we're advocating and that we're fussing about, if you want to call it, if if you want to call it fussing, that we're speaking about. These are going to be pieces of freedom or liberty that we really don't get to enjoy. It's going to, excuse me, it's going to be about our grandchildren, our children and our grandchildren or whoever else, or about our ancestors. So implementing the change that we want to outlast us after we're gone, because that's, that's what it's really about. Is this going to outlast me when I leave? Am I going to be able to make so much of a difference and ring the alarm and cause all of this awareness if if I if and when I pass, will the movement or the point or the fact of the matter that I've laid down, will that outlast me? Will it still be here? Will my grandchildren or children be able to benefit from what I had spoken about? Will my children and grandchildren be able to reap the benefits? And and I'm not even just talking about like my biological and blood grandchildren and grandchildren. I'm talking about like me, like literally caring for the people. And not just me. I'm talking about people who really feel this way. So nonetheless, we've gotten into it. We didn't gotten into it. How do I back up out of it? Child, I done got all the way into this blackness. Can somebody help me back out? What's the, where the comments at? Of course, they have to pass a statement. Wait for Dr. Omar donation. <laughs> Shout out to Michi, that's my home girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Michi X, shout out to you. Been rocking with you since 2018. Homeschool. It's rules and regulations for homeschool. You know what? There are rules and regulations for homeschool. However, where we are right now with the lack of care and concern in the public school system, people need to really be careful about the private school situation right now. Or is the private school ideology uh, something that people should be considering. Yeah, I think it's something that everybody's considering nowadays, especially considering how corrupt the public school system is. But when it comes to the private school sector, it's 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 just that. It's the private school sector and the public school system is in crisis, but the upcoming um private school system could potentially be in jeopardy as well, depending on, because filing a complaint on the public versus the private school system, think about it. Think about it. File a complaint against the public school system and it's like, yeah, everybody's listening, everybody's with it because it's what, like, this is, these are public people. Private school situation, you're paying for it, it's more intimate, people are going to believe the instructors more than they believe you not to mention they have more rain 
to give more of what do, what are they trying to give? Are they trying to give racism, pedophilia, maps, minor attractive people? Private school owners or runners have more leeway <laughs> than the public school. Honestly, I'm I'm really just taking a taking a moment to think it through right now. But yeah, the private school owners have will have more rights than the public school owners. Um because of how j just because of where society is right now. So um that is that. Ooh, we got into a situation. Let me back out. Let me back out. I'm in the, I, I'm in the middle of a serious conversation and thought. I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> I think about, I talk about the school systems and people intentions all day. I do. It's part of my job, right? Like I work my nine to five and then I do my YouTube and all of that stuff. But I'm, I, I just, I just, I just. <laughs> Miss Parker says salute to 11,000 subscribers to play this chain next will be 16,000 before 2023 guarantee oh absolutely thank you so much 16,000 by the end of 2023 that would leave me with 9, 10, 11, 12 13, 14, 15, 16 Yeah, I think I'll be higher than 60. I think I will at least be at 20K by the end of the year. That's my thought, though. That's just my thought. I think I will at least be at 20K by the end of the year. I think I'll be way more ahead of 16K. But you know what? These are just my. These are my impressions. Just when I thought I said all I could say, check on the side. Got one on the way. These are my impressions. <laughs> Man, I'm thrilled and I don't know what to do. Guess I gotta give you part two of my. If I'm gonna tell it, then I gotta tell. All right, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I do think I think I'll be a little. I think I'll be a well aware, well above sixteen thousand by the end of the year, by January first. Um, somebody says 40. I don't know. I ain't, try, I ain't trying to get too generous. Um, nonetheless, look, I hope that you all have an amazing evening. I know sometimes I give a, uh, sometimes, most of the times I give a, um, sticky note. There's no sticky note today, but for our next show, we will have an amazing sticky note. Who's in the chat? It don't even seem like it's a lot of people in the chat. It's a lot of people here. It's like 300 people here. But it's not a lot of people in the chat. I mean, it is literally 3.45 in the morning. <laughs> Rashida said, you love us so much. Go to be it. This was an awesome session. I'm glad you thought so. My little one is an African centered Montessori. And I'm afraid that of what awaits her. Once she in this great school, the school system in New York City is true to the pits right now. Oh, and they're short. Yeah, everyone's short staff right now. That sucks. You know, honestly, I wish you. And what is it? Was it your niece? My, oh, your little one is your child. I wish you the best. I wish you the best. We live in crazy times. We live in really, 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 really crazy times. Um, to the point where even sometimes I have to catch up on the craziness. And that means a lot because I'm always hip on what's going on. But sometimes I'm just, I'm just, sometimes a lot of times I'm really disgusted <laughs> Based on what's going on. It'd be nasty. It'd be nasty. Okay. Someone said let's shoot for 22K by the end of the year. We should we should start taking bets. 
by the end of the year. A couple months left. Can we double it? Can we not? 22, 22. You know what? I keep my projections based on the month. I really haven't even taken the time to try to think about where I might be by the end of the year. Other people be saying stuff and I just swish it away because I'm, um, uh, it's, I, I would say it's like a bit of nervousness mixed with humbleness because I'm like, just act like it's nothing and then the number will be big regardless, you know? That's that's how I try to think about it. Um, so, yeah. Um, Shay Jim Dropper says, I'm going to win a box. Okay, well, if, if you collect the numbers, <laughs> then you'll win. Yeah, all right. Show the people you, yourself one more time. You coming up here? You coming up here? All right, well, come on. Okay, well, come on. All right. You, you was getting on my nerves a little bit earlier today, but I guess we solved it. All right, all right, all right. I was trying to show the people who you was. I wasn't trying to treat you like Simba or anything like that. Yeah. Ouch. You about that? Ouch. You about that to get down? Yeah, I mean that. Hey, get your tail up. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. All right. Brick by brick. I really am brick by brick. <laughs> Some people want to see me back at 100K, but it's just kind of like their numbers. You know what I mean? Like they're really just numbers. I think the quality is most important. And, um, you know, just wanting numbers, I feel like it doesn't soothe or feed anyone. For real, for real. So it's, yeah, I am trying to build a bag brick by brick because I care about quantity um, and quality. I'm sorry. I care about the quality versus the quantity. And yeah, watch me or don't watch me. And see, look, I'm quick to tell somebody don't watch me. I had somebody pull up to the last video and was like, I'm offended. But I'm tired of these videos. Because, you know, da 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 And, you know, the fact of the matter was that person wasn't really listening to the videos. <laughs> They're tired of videos that they don't even really listen to. Um, what all I'm doing is making pedophiles uncomfortable, child. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I will catch y'all in the next video. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. I'm tired. I can't even start. I ain't ate nothing. It's 4 o'clock in the morning over here in Baltimore. Um, And look, I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. <laughs> anyway... Yeah, you you never be turned over enough so that people um could see you. You said is that enough? Yeah, but would you look at the camera, please? Uh this way where the people that way where the people this way where the, the people right this way all right, you don't get it. You don't get it, Leo. Yeah, you don't get it. Why would you meow at me like that? You spoke so nasty. He said, yeah.
I mean, it was the nastiest meow. Why did you talk to me that way? I don't like that. He ain't had to talk to me like that. I feel disrespected. <laughs> Somebody said what I'm drinking. I'm drinking this low calorie beer, White Claw. So it's just 100 calories, 1% of sodium, 1% of a carb, 2 grams of sugar. Barely nothing. It's supposed to be some healthy stuff. It's supposed to be. So that's what I'm trying out. Nonetheless, bye, y'all. I ain't got nothing else to say. I literally have nothing else to say. I'm out of here. Thank y'all so much for checking in. Thank you for checking the community tab. Um, thank you for letting me know what you have for dinner. Don't forget to do something to relax and decompress today. Subscribe to the backup channel. It is linked in on the community tab. If you see where I thank you for 11,000 subs, you'll see. I'll say subscribe to the backup channel. It'll say at TPJ Network and... It'll be lit up in blue. So click that button and that's it. <laughs> as soon as I said, I ain't got nothing else to say, y'all. 20 clicked away. It's my fault. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I'm sending y'all positivity, good vibes, and all this stuff as always. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Although I'll speak to you before Monday. So behave. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Excuse me. I keep burping. So I'll see you soon. 